Why don't we, why don't you go right into the budget? Um, that's what we're here to talk okay. about. So you might as well start while this thing, that's why I hate computers, it goes down at work, can't get it up here. I'm having a great day today. Well, there are two things that I wanted us to focus in on. Um, <clears throat> first is the calendar of events and deadlines that uh, we need to observe in order to make the smooth budget season. And the other one was the instructions to the department so that they can start working on their their budgets. Uh, and I guess the, the calendar is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I'm asking that we uh, start the budget season this Friday. Uh, we don't have to do it quite so soon with a deadline of January 29th, which is a day after the school committee. Thank you for that. All right. Um, and opening the warrant with a deadline of uh, February 13th. Um, CPA uh, deadline for proposals is the 31st, and we're going to have the CPA, uh, scheduled the CPA to come in for the um, department head meeting so that they can give a presentation as to the application process, but also the kinds of projects that they have in mind that are high priorities for them, as well as a willingness to work with the departments in order to shape their budget uh, requests so that they can be successful. Uh, this is something I'm very welcome, and you know, it's a departure from previous years. So hopefully that will happen on the 12th, but the deadline for the CPA proposals is December 31st, 30th 1st. Uh, in past years, we've had an all boards and committees meeting. Uh, I don't know if that's something that you want to do this time around, or how that fits into your strategy, your priorities. Probably would have been nice if the finance was here so we could know how they would like uh, yeah. for everybody to participate. Um, mm -hmm. I suppose we could put out what we would like. Um, certainly the major players, school committee, and Public safety. Of course, we're always weekly meeting. Wherever we have a meeting, we're meeting on the senior and library, so that'll be certainly ongoing. But mm -hmm. for, for our other um, DPW, so you know, I'm sure when we get those things in place, we, we'd like to have them all present when we're doing the budget, or we're they going to submit their uh, proposals first. Well, last year, the way that you organized the budget is by divisions rather than departments. And we wanted to get away from individual departments within silos, mm -hmm. building their their budgets and uh, not coordinating with other like departments within their divisions. So public safety, for example, covers police, fire, ambulance, dispatch, and building inspections. And you all set goals for that division with an eye towards enhancing the fire and the ambulance in particular, uh, they were able to work very cooperatively together in order to achieve efficiencies, savings, and uh, bring the budgets in on target. So that seemed to work very well for you last year, and that's something that I think that we should try again. Mm -hmm. uh, One thing, are, are we going to, uh, we talked about having a sort of uh, conference committee, for lack of a better term, before the um, uh, special town meeting where there are some differences in what the finance committee was putting forward and what the di various departments were. Are we going to do something like that so that way we can kind of eliminate some of these last minute issues like we had the, the, the staff car and, and things like that that came up? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, so, uh, well, and we also had, yeah. we thought the planning board were, were, were doing the uh, proposals, their, their permits, or the marijuana things, and they threw it back in our lap, which right. we hadn't anticipated that. But right. Yeah, that was, we can talk a little bit more about that later on. That was unfortunate, particularly since the planning board at the uh, public hearing for the, the warrant uh, handled all the adult use marijuana articles. It would have been a dandy time for them to say, well, 
this one we don't know anything about. We would have had to you know, we put that together. Uh, Definitely a communication problem. Because I just think we could eliminate some of the problems and last minute changes and make sure that some of these must have some various departments aren't being skipped over because people don't understand the, the need for them. Right. Mm -hmm. And then everybody knows exactly what's in the budget that's going to town meeting right. so that they have an opportunity to talk about it, talk about it before it's just thrown out there. Thrown out there. Yeah. Well, last year you organized the budget by division rather than by department. Mm -hmm. uh, seem to work very well for you. I think it definitely worked better than the individual silos. Sure. Yeah. And it can be by division talking with, you know, right. exactly. yeah, that's the problem, various, various departments. Mm -hmm. And the role of the Finance Committee last year was very much that they handled the budget, that they, they took it, and if there was any areas of dispute between the Finance Committee and the Select Board, that that was an opportunity, that was where you needed to focus your energy. In past years, you've had the departments in front of you, and then they had go to the, the finance committee, so each department is presenting their budget twice. Um, so it seemed to work very well last year that the finance committee took the uh, departments and divisions and talked about their budgets and uh, reported back to you, and if you objected or had a concern or whatever, then you would focus in on that area of disagreement and not, not have to worry about areas where you had agreement. Did you have any concerns, Dr. McKenzie? No, that did work out really well last year. Um, it was helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I offer um, something? Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay, by me. <laughs> So I was just, um, to use one of David's words, I was a little bit vexed when I saw the draft instructions from the select board, but I know that David's putting them out there for us to react to, too. Exactly. Like, yeah. Giving you something so, to chew on. Right, something to vex you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I went back just recognizing that David and, and Christian certainly are new this year um, to this process. but. I went back through my own kind of archives and just tried to pull out some of the documents that we've had in front of us before. I don't know if you come on. Sure. Thank you. Oop. And I know that this, oops, I'm sorry. No, it is. And I'm sure that this isn't 100%, it's just what I could easily put my hands on um, in, in my own files. But the, the date at the top of September, I wrote in like, when we talked about things. So this was from September of 2015. I guess this is, a, you can have the song, how time slips away playing in the background here. <laughs> but uh, I was actually surprised it was 2015. We, we that summer, I believe, uh, had asked all of the departments to do the SWOT analyses. Mm -hmm. And they did a tremendous amount of work on that. We all agreed that they did a fantastic job. That was when everybody was over at the uh, safety complex, so there's a lot of camaraderie being built. And then coming out of the SWOT analyses as a select board, we sat down and kind of agreed on, on what what the common themes were. So that's this first, that first page, which is just a kind of a quick summary from that. Then in um, April in 2016, we put together, a, or discussed as a select board, a plan uh, on how we could go about addressing a five-year plan and, and, and put, you know, a, a process in place, hopefully, that would would get us there. And again, this was just an outline, like the first thing on there was we're building needs. So clearly we know the end result of some of that. But building needs and public safety being priorities. And again, at this point, I think we've pretty well addressed the police and fire issues that we were talking about then. And again, we took a little bit of a right-hand turn with the building because of, well, we all know the story there. But this, um, this is what we had laid out in terms of kind of departmentally what, where we wanted to focus time and energy. Um, service enhancements and staffing, just identifying areas where people were talking about wanting additional staff or, uh, you know, the, the planning board function itself, what happens when they all retire. So those are, 
those pages, and then in May, right after that, we laid out a timeline where we were going to spend our time by month. So in the month of May, we were going to do this, June, July, August, September, October, leading up to the beginning of the budget cycle. And again, this is 2016. Um, and then specific action items that needed to occur in order to make that happen. You know, talking about getting that wage study done, um, a staffing analysis, we talked about forming a, a subcommittee with a work group of some kind, um, the community compact initiative, which you know, David did pursue on our behalf and has been very successful. So some of this has been done, a lot of it still hasn't been done. Um, and then May of 2017, um, tried to summarize again kind of where we were. This was a conversation that's coming out of a tri-board meeting, mainly between the finance committee and the select board. Um, wanting to find out about, get get ourselves educated, you know, um, but do some fact gathering around the override options, and that occurred. We did have uh, Sandy Fuller and Terry Williams in. We had Joe Shea from the Hampshire Trust, Parker Elmore from the OPEB. So again, some of these thing, things happened, some didn't. Um, and then a year later, now this year, we sat down at, over the summer and we put together some select board goals. And the one I have here is just the, what I was working off of, but every select board member had their own goals. And I'm trying to, I mean, I, I'm reluctant to give direction to the departments when we ourselves as a board haven't had any time to really talk about where we might want to see some changes in the budget going forward. Yeah. Well, all this, I mean, if you could go back to 915 and you work through it, there's been a lot accomplished since 2015. That's what I'm saying. A lot I of mean, this has been be, done, but be, there's still a lot between that Between a lot of, between public safety, I mean, that's mm -hmm. been more than uh, worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, the library and the uh, Council on Aging, that has consumed us for the past 15 to eight, for the past 15 to 18 months mm -hmm. actually um, so I mean we you know it's a lot of these things have um, overtaken us in a lot of ways that doesn't leave a lot of time you know I mean we I think that we've done quite a bit in the last year mm -hmm. anyway well um, I'm just thinking about the reason I brought these out was wondering again we've got two brand new board members so I'm sure have their own ideas about how to go up go about planning process mm -hmm. but th this is just a yeah again this is just something that I had accessible to me no, in the past so I'm wondering it's great to see it but how I, we can move forward I, let's not be unrealistic that we haven't really had a whole lot of time putting out fires these past just, well, this isn't, I, I'm, I'm you know, trying to find a framework for right, us to operate in. Right. That's where I'm going with this. And, and, I, and I'm saying this, all of this, I think, needs to be updated and put into a framework that works for the yeah. current board. Yeah. I, I, I would think that I would like to see a you know, schedule that we could kind of follow throughout the year. That's a framework, you know, because this the cycle is relatively and, and stable. And be realistic that there'll be breaks in the framework. Oh, exactly. <laughs> but to have no framework seems like, you know, well, yeah. we have, if we had something that was like kind of a guiding document of ours, so we had, we could kind of schedule in time for strategic planning and setting goals and having discussions about these things would be great, I, I think, if we could adopt that as a board. Um, All right, it's fine with me. I, mean, I don't certainly don't have a problem with, with setting goals and whatever, but certainly depending on whatever shoots out at us at certain different different times, if that uh, our time frame doesn't always allow us to, I mean, so you can only be stretched for so many things. You, I don't know how you feel about it. I mean, you've been... Yeah, I mean, I feel yeah, like I mean, we could we could have some, we do have, I feel like we could make some time for some broader discussions and setting goals for things and trying to be a little proactive you know mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying we have to account, tackle everything um, but if we had some time to set a vision I think that would be great too well, we can always you know set forth a, you know, a time frame that you would like to if you want to present a time frame of what 
you feel we should be working on for the next year? Yeah. I mean, I can go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think it would. Uh, you can combine everybody's thoughts. Uh, yeah. uh, another. This this is obviously my first town budget because we came after the last yeah. one was our town budget. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it may be too late at this point to really do a long range plan for FY20, I guess. Um, but it, at least setting up some different milestones and giving us a little focus. For example, if we were going to focus on, let's just say, schools or um, public safety or human resources. <laughs> that's, <laughs> and, what, that's what I said. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, a, and address one department maybe every year or two departments every year so we can kind of more focus on rather than just say, let's level fund everything and just throw it out, throw it out the way. So that way, you know, some people, we may have to give them that instruction. Just say, plan on level funding, we'll get to you next time around. Um, but that what about the 416 where that was the five-year plan to address town needs? Um, if we could take a look at that and see just what has been um, accomplished and what make another list of what we we need to do um, certainly some of these things have have been done but why don't we at least start from there and then add to it you have an HR function you know those are things that are all been uh, talked about in 2016 so why can't we go back to that list and see if we can eliminate what we feel has been accomplished and what else we need to now focus on and make that our time frame? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, and that's why, I've, you Thank know, looking at yeah. the instructions here, mm -hmm. I mean, the first, and I'll say it on camera so people can yell at me, but I, this is not a recommendation. I was <laughs> but David's first point is there will be no proposition two and a half override. I'm not advocating for an override right now, but if we don't know what the target is we're trying to hit, we can't really say that. You know, I mean, we don't want to just make that an absolute and put it out in front of the department heads when we're talking about. Now, what we might do is, we know, I think, the vast majority of people, I'm just using HR as an easy example, mm -hmm. um, has been advocating very heavily. Um, and our department heads feel the stress of not having mm -hmm. a human resource function. So. Can we get creative and find a way to fund some portion of that? You, Ian? We, so we're, we're grateful the town supports us tremendously, obviously, the treasurer's office in Joan. Um, we are, it, it takes a lot of work, but we feel pretty good about our ability to recruit, retain, onboard, um, implement all the aspects of the contract. So. But then it's then it's up to Joan or Linda to go through the insurances and Correct. all of that Correct. thing. So, we, so you can do one part of it in, in doing the hiring and uh, evaluations mm -hmm. and things like that. But then this side of it, we have the liability insurance, the health insurance, and anything else that goes along with the hiring. So the town does a great deal to support the schools mm -hmm. and all of those functions. We do feel good about the things that we're able to do. We don't need help with supervision, evaluation, recruitment, protection. Correct. There are things that the town is already right. doing. But, but whereas the town does need mm -hmm. support in those areas. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think just saying that, I personally feel like I'd like to see us have a human resources person on this budget. Um, I think the town needs it. And I think, I, I don't know the steps to get there exactly, but I know that we need it and we should be taking no, and steps unfortunately, to get we there. have been talking about yeah. it for a long time and we kind of have put public safety out there as the number one for the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. And yeah. now, you know, we had getting them on board and then all of a sudden we've got the library and the senior center sitting in our yard and, you know, that came upon us mm -hmm. quicker than we thought it was going to, although it hasn't been too quick lately, but just looking at, I guess, my area, the DPW, mm -hmm. for example, from 16, those those goals, um, we basically determined and, and Marlo had determined that there is no need for a new DPW facility. There is no need to move or expand, um, you know, things like that. Whereas, 
focusing on license development and, and education and things like that, if, you know, we could be helping us out in, in a very important way for a, a couple of years in the future. But I mean, really, I guess we're kind of working off an old list still. So, so. Yeah, and that's thing that could be updated now right. for. Right, we've added equipment and right. things like that down at the DPW since 2016. And right. Because right. yeah. uh, to tell them the level fund, everything we have, I mean, we're, we're kind of just treading water. And uh, really, we're falling further behind just based on the, the licensing requirements that we're having down there and some of the other issues. So. Okay. So would that be the pleasure of the board, then, to work off of this list? To, to update. Yeah, so, update. Uh, update. Yeah, yeah. So, so tonight I did not expect us to have fully formed budget instructions for the department. So this is our first opportunity to really talk about what, what your priorities may include for FY2020. Uh, certainly, certainly we've invested a lot in education and OPEP and, um, and public safety. Uh, it may be that we need to focus in on some other areas, whether that be HR or IT or whatever it happens to be, or public works. Uh, all of these things are crying for some sort of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, we have unlimited needs and we have limited resources by which to address those needs. And FY 2020 is going to be a bit of a tough year because we were stretched so far in FY 19 in order to enhance the public safety, particularly the ambulance, and some of the other things that happened and having to fund OPEB entirely out of stabilization fund. We can't do that again this year. So, Can I make uh, one suggestion that I've seen more in the private sector as far as uh, budgeting? If we could put the various departments on more of a cycle, whether it's a three-year cycle or a five-year cycle or whatever, and basically everybody knows that they can basically plan on a level of funding until it's their turn to ask for extraordinary mm -hmm. needs or you know improvements or, or whatever um, that way we don't need to so much focus on the departments that it's not their turn this year mm -hmm. uh, that way we can actually devote the time instead of and, and kind of dig into it a little bit more because we can't we can't do all of it every year as a part-time board there's no way. So, and that's exactly yeah. what um, i think guilford was the one who I think it was Guilford that had suggested that back in 14 or 15 when the conversation first came up. And that was the idea. So we agreed on public safety. Right. But then we hadn't agreed on what's next. Right. So, so we just so establish yeah. a rotation, and whether yeah. it's three or five or however many years, mm -hmm. I don't know what, what the right number is. But that way we can kind of devote our time to what's important. You know, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that type of have you hired somebody for IT now that Mr. Duffy's retired? Yes, we have. Mm -hmm. We have. And we spoke a little bit to David about what options might be available. But so the school department is willing and eager to be helpful in any way we can to the town. This person will start the have the next, I think. I did say um, that first and foremost, we're going to make sure this is the first year that all MCAS testing has to be done online. There's only one thing really? I care. There's only one thing that guy's got to get right. <laughs> Once we're clear that that's right, um, we're open to talking about what you know. If Even third graders are online. Everybody's online this year. Oh yeah, everybody's mm -hmm. online this year. So, but we have spoken to David. We'd be open to exploring how you know if there's ways that we could. Share resources and support the town for having to do that. Yeah. Once everybody logs on to that test, it's like, <laughs> yeah. all Success. on the table. And we have some other uh, things going on for IT as well. Mm -hmm. It's working on, mm -hmm. with uh, Rockhampton and regionalization and yeah. that kind of thing. And so I just wanted to know well, where yeah, yeah, the yeah. school was. Who did you hire, Ann? Oh, uh, sorry. That's fine. David Olson, and he is currently works for the Collaborative for Educational Services and actually knows Mike Duffy quite well. But he Nice. Very good. So he knows schools well, and he knows uh, education well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> David, you want to um, just 
Christian's bringing up the Ante. Do you want to talk about what you yeah, said? Yeah, well, you were taking the lead on this, uh, so if I miss a point, then let me know. Uh, but uh, about a year ago, you attended a uh, meeting at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission having to do with shared or regional IT, and uh, the city of Northampton has a laser fish document management system, which is successful and they're willing to share. They have some open licenses and capacity to support us. So we had a very productive meeting last Thursday, last Thursday, Thursday over in Northampton mm -hmm. with the IT department and we're doing the background research to apply for uh, efficiency and regionalization grant through the community compact, which is going to open up in January 15th and closing February 15th. So we have document management issues galore here in the town of Hadley, just being able to manage the paperwork that's around here. If we could go to a laser fish system, which would include electronic retrieval and search functions, double backup, uh, and I think that would go a long way towards addressing some of the uh, clutter that we have here, as well as improve our ability to manage other important uh, work functions. Yes. I gotta ask, what is laser fiche? I know what microfiche is, but right. I assume it's just scanned documents, is that what it is, or is it? It's scanned in a particular way, and I don't, I don't pretend to understand the totality of it. Yeah, I can, so yes, there's, there's scanned documents, but it strips off metadata so that you can enhance the, the in-search capability. But it's it, it's above and beyond like a Dropbox because of the, the metadata. We were talking about Dropbox. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like more of an industry standard for non, you know, right. governmental agencies. Um, it is very much public records request friendly. Um, it is supportive of the concept of transparency. So in Northampton, you, you can choose to make folders completely public. So the public can come in and view things. Um, one of the things that really struck me is that where they've had the greatest success is in the planning. So their planning board and building inspector were the ones who jumped on immediately because it was a way for them where they could just create a, a site location folder, you know, however they store things in the, the drawers down there, scan everything in, um, and then it's all in one place. And so I was thinking about everything we've heard from Bill Dwyer and Jim Maximoski mm -hmm. about moving these, everything. Well, and, and it being on mm -hmm. private servers. And, and mm -hmm. you know, so they said that that's an absolute slam dunk if you did nothing else but just get all of those property records together in one place. It's huge. And it also has workflow functionality. So it, they freely admitted that they haven't really taken full advantage of it, but it does have simple workflow functionality with one of the examples being a permitting process, or licensing processes, so that if you, you know, Jennifer's the entree point and she starts something, you can create a workflow so that it automatically goes to the building inspector and then to the fire, fire chief, chief yeah. police chief, and then to the tax collector, so everybody signs off and it just gets routed around. You know, somebody gets an email saying you have a you have a permit waiting for your approval or, mm -hmm. or input, whatever. So a little bit like combination of Dropbox and DocuSign, basically. With exactly. Okay. They um, they talked about actually the DocuSign process. I don't think that it's up and running, but I think it's coming soon, or they maybe they had partially implemented. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. But the the idea there would be grant money, and I think you know we've talked about having an IT person, but in the absence of one, if this is something that we could get done through a grant, it's a subscription service. We don't have to worry about the care and feeding of it. Um, people can access it through a browser, so we're not introducing a whole bunch of computer equipment that we need to take care of. Uh, and it would help everybody move forward a little bit, so even though the focus might not be on any cost to them. it at all, did they say? There's a subscription, and we have the... Um, the information I will tell you is I, I I don't have it on me, but it's it's yeah, not bad. significant. Yeah, a I couple mean, of grand is what I A couple I thousand dollars. I yeah. mean, for what it can do, it certainly would be worth it, wouldn't it? Cheaper than a salary, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So at least that we'd be moving the ball forward from an information technology standpoint, and it would be a benefit to everybody, um, so that we could then hone in on the critical issues within the DPWs. Um, 
department. Sounds good. Got to write it first. <coughs> wait for the I'm portal. just remembering, I was going to give you that guy Mike's name. I was going to see if I can find it on the All internet. Right. But just a couple of clarifying questions on the deadlines you put out. Is that all right? Just, mm -hmm. All right, so I have 1212 CPAs presented to department heads. Um, 1231 CPA proposals are due. 129 budgets are due to you from all department heads. 213 is a deadline for submission of articles for the town warrant. Uh, selfishly thinking on the school side, I am, I'm assuming that the process is still, the town is operating off of its multi-year capital planning master plan, and that we wouldn't, departments, so correct me if I'm wrong, departments would not just be kind of arbitrarily submitting warrants because the town is somewhat directing folks to say, you know, this is our long-term plan and this is, we're putting together a warrant that aligns with that plan. Is that correct, or should I be telling the school committee, hey, what do you want to buy in May? And so <laughs> what direction should I be giving the school committee? Well, what you, what, what you normally would put on town warrants, so if, I mean, for that spring town warrant, if it's a major article, then we would have to, you know, do a, we could do a place mark for you. Yeah, I guess what I'm asking, and, and maybe I'm overthinking this, I, I, I thought the town, had, so we have this longer term capital plan. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the point of that, and I could be mistaken, but I thought the point of that was to kind of organize what is submitted for town warrant. And I just want to make sure that that I'm understanding that. Who's yeah, yeah, so 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 on capital? That's me. But we could you. do the capital committee in you know, in January, I guess, and see kind of where we're at and if there's anything new to that plan. And kind of solidify it because I know there are some, you know, there are some purchases coming up at Capital. Um, the one that sticks in my head is the generator at the public safety mm -hmm. complex right. yeah. um, that was slated for 2020. So um, I don't know what else you guys were planning. I don't remember anything. We're reviewing from our so we're, regard as part of our preliminary budget talks and regularly throughout the year the school committee looks at the capital plan but the reason we would look at it now is to look at our capital plan and that larger town plan and say okay what do they expect us to be putting forth for the warrant but I, I just wanted to make sure that I was I had the right operating assumption here maybe. so what what we have been trying to do is we're trying to, in the past we've tried to put together an operational budget for the annual town meeting and then a capital budget for the special town meeting. And the capital uh, plan gets updated there during the summertime uh, because that way you, okay. can, you can use recurring revenues for your operations and one-time money, free cash, etc., for the capital purchases in the, in the fall. We haven't quite got there, but that's what we've been trying to do in the past couple of years. So that's helpful. So then we wouldn't be looking what's on that plan, FY20, is not, we're not worried about this deadline. But I mean, a large town capital plan that includes the school's priorities. It's already gone before the capital committee. That we're not, we're not trying to submit those for February 13th. It sounds like that is what goes at fall time. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we've been doing. That's what we've been doing. Okay. Okay. All right. That's, that's why we've okay. been doing it, and uh, that's when the money is going to be most available during the springtime meeting for capital purchases. Not springtime meeting, fall time meeting, sorry. But, I mean, we could review it and just see, you know, based on our projected purchases, you know, in this coming year, where does that fall in the budget? Mm -hmm. You know, just we could look at it. Try to, I mean, the more we can update that plan to have some projections would be great in my mind, but. Um, I, I don't want to create work for you. I just want yeah. to make sure I don't miss We could that see line. what the list is. Yeah, yeah, I, I was just looking. I don't think I have an up-to-date list because it doesn't have the cafeteria upgrades on there, but um, I can look and see what I have. Did we fully fund everything that we approved at the um, special town meeting as far as purchases and, and we have to go for the override vote, yeah. Yeah. which is the 
December, December 18th. December 18th. The date of this academy. Um, I'm sorry, uh, there were a couple of capital items that we did not fund, uh, that just didn't make it. I think the other thing that would be helpful too is if the schools already know like that there's some sort of a, a gap or a need that you're trying to figure out now how to address and you think it's going to be a struggle, I think the sooner that we know that, the better too. Um, so what again. we'll do on December 17th mm -hmm. is say if if materials and supplies were level funding and people were level serviced, right? Because the level funding people is actually cut because the step in lane changes. So if, if we did that, and if nothing changed in special education based on what we know right now, mm -hmm. um, and special transportation related costs, and nothing changed in vocational education, this is the impact to FY20. Mm -hmm. Which so still were very much in December seventeenth in Fairyland, yeah. right? That's yeah. that like yeah. fairy tale. That's probably not mm -hmm. going to happen. That everything remains completely frozen in time. Mm -hmm. But that's our starting point, mm -hmm. and then we try to get a lot closer. But we're still typically in January presenting you with uh, what we would assume would be the most challenging scenario mm -hmm. in January. And then, as you know, as figures come in around revenues and uh, certainly a big deal is April 1st because April 1st is the move-in, move-out cutoff cut for mm -hmm. special education tuitions. Um, so as we progress and we know more, and as we know more, then we get that information to FinCon or Select Board or where we're supposed to get that information to make those adjustments. I'm thinking more along what, like, you know, unfunded mandates. I mean, because you're in it every day, we may not be aware, like, if there was some sort of law change or some initiative coming down from the state that was going to be a new challenge to schools. So yeah, that's the kind of thing information that we be. face, which then gets passed on to what the town faces, is when, so we know that the preschool grant will no longer be funded next year. It's gone down every year for the past three years. We submitted for our health grant that has been supporting one of our nurse salaries, mm -hmm. but that grant has ended and we just submitted today for a competitive cycle that's going to be very competitive because it's really it really favors large urban districts which they want the money used for um, so we would put we're also in our first round of assumptions we're going to assume that we're not getting those grants mm -hmm. that changes i mean we'd much rather under promise over deliver um, yeah, I think that's so, worst, so, worst case. Right. So we're going to assume we're not getting those. Okay. We're going to assume that circuit breaker is not going to be funded. Mm -hmm. It never has been funded at the rate that it's supposed to be funded at. We're going to assume it's going to be funded at a low rate, and then if we can take that up. So th those are the big ones. It's grant the funding. The charter expansion could be problematic if it were to go through. Because, I mean, it gets in our backyard. Mm -hmm. Right? So mm -hmm. yeah. it just helps for us to have that. That will be the picture that really you get on the 29th, and that picture doesn't have a lot of detail in it because we can tell you all the assumptions that we built off of. Again, staffing is the same, so we've moved people uh, in accordance with contractual obligations. We've made these assumptions about special education. We've made these assumptions about transportation. These are all the assumptions that we've made, and that's how it gets us to this bottom line. Here are all the pieces that could move. And we'll try to make those assumptions, worst case scenario. So these are all the things that could gently move in our favor. Mm -hmm. right? And then we just pay attention to the budget that comes out of the state, how they're going to fund circuit breaker, mm -hmm. things like that. Is there any movement on the, um, the whole funding formula conversation? Well, the challenging part, we'll be talking about that at the school committee and then a lot more in January. So I think that there is a commitment to to look at, there, obviously they've already looked at foundation formula. I think that there is a commitment to maybe um, implement some of the recommendations. But unfortunately, if they implemented all the recommendations, four out of every 10 districts would not receive an additional dime. Yeah. So even implemented, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit everybody. It certainly doesn't benefit everybody equally. Mm -hmm. um, so Nothing ever does, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's the bigger cities that usually yeah. get the bigger chunk. Yeah. But we will, we're keeping our eye on that. 
talk well, while you're here. Do you want to talk about the charter school expansion and talk a little bit about anything as far as passing on from the school committee and what they put out as far as the Sure. So the school committee decided to, uh, the school committee wrote a letter. Um, also the Collaborative for Educational Services Board of Directors. So we are a member of that and one of our school committees sits on that board as well. They also issued a letter. Um, the, I'll, I'll speak more about our school committee's letter. Our school committee always says and they, they do completely respect the rights of parents to choose whatever educational options they think are best for their children. So we certainly are not, uh, we're not disputing a parent's right to make that decision. We support that decision. The school committee um, did point out that in that the application, in some cases the state, just like they set targets for us, the state has set some targets that in fact the school hadn't met, so questioned whether or not that an expansion should be granted based on that. But the biggest issue, and this is a little challenging because it doesn't really go to, um, it doesn't, it's not necessarily the grounds upon which the state would make a determination about approving an expansion. But the school committee did point out that just like circuit breaker, the charter reimbursement formula to towns has never been fully funded. I mean, I, I don't have the numbers right in front of me. Actually, when I do the budget packet that the select board of FinCom will see, I do do a chart uh, every single year what the town should have received in charter reimbursement and what it actually received. And so we do struggle with the fact that there is a push for expansion on a model that the state hasn't figured out how to make good on its initial promises of holding harmless the towns that would be most negatively affected by this. And that, that's the, the biggest issue that our school committee has in general is, is the funding. They asked for comment by, I think it was December 3rd or something mm -hmm. like that, so do you have any sense what Desi's going to roll on it or? Uh, I can find out for you, if the camera can pan to somebody else, I'll look up on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I can find out for you quickly. Uh, I think, I want to say that they were planning on doing it at their January meeting, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they're going to move fairly quickly then. I think so, I believe it was at their January. And I'm sure every year at the MMA meeting they have something about school choice too, or on occasion they'll have a yep. seminar on that. Yep. Yeah. So the finance committee, um, I didn't happen to catch their last meeting. Was there anything that came up at their meeting that we should be talking about for the budget yeah. process? Chris, you were there so yeah, far. Too, so that they were very interested in IT, very much interested in HR, committed to exploring how to enhance those functions. Um, I think there was a third thing. Well, they were talking about the school budget a lot, then they were talking about municipal building committee um, for a bit. Um, I guess one thing municipal building committee would like to have a maintenance budget in the budget to do building maintenance and possibly have that be something that would be a rollover type fund. So say a, a revolving fund, I'm sorry, yeah, thank you. Um, where there would be, if you want to paint town hall, you know, you could wait a couple years and build up the fund and then have a kind of a big chunk of money to paint it, Versailles. those kind of projects. Very Something, Versailles. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> yeah. Don't kill the messenger here. <laughs> Um, that so anyway, that was one thing that was talked about. Um, and then, yeah, I had mentioned, you know, HR manager, um, IT, finance, something along those lines, and how that would go. Um, you know, they mentioned in the past, like with the ambulance, there was a committee to come up with that. They're also kind of just in favor of maybe going for, uh, you know, having these positions since it's We've talked about it for so long, eventually we have to pull the trigger on, it would be good to just pull the trigger on something and, and do it. So, um, some talk about that, but uh, there's interest there to do something. Mm -hmm. I think that about covers it. Thank you. Sounds good. All right, so I did find no earlier than December 18th, no later than February 12th, 
the department, the Board of Education will make its determination. Um, I don't have the exact amount, but I did find the table that I was referring to, David, that I typically put together. Just to give you a sense of um, actual versus owed. So in FY14, the town got about 98% of what was owed under the reimbursement formula. But then in FY15, the owed charter reimbursement was about 186,000, and the town got about 136,000. In FY16, this is in cumulative of each year. In FY16, the town was owed 134,000, got about 64,000. Uh, in FY17, owed 202,000, roughly I'm rounding on this, received about 121,000. In FY18, uh, owed 245,000, received about 119,000. FY19, owed 127, 127, received about 38,000. So each of those years gaps and add them together. That's nothing the town failed to do. That's across the board. The charter reimbursement wasn't funded, fully funded, just like That's regional transportation, just like circuit breaker. Um, so this was, this table is actually in our school committee's letter saying, but we're, we're making up the gap, basically. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. exactly. But we've been saying I, we've been saying that from the get go yeah. with school choice. I, I have to say I was the last member, of the dying breed, to vote over school choice. I just couldn't do it. I conscious of conscience mm -hmm. with my conscience, I could not feel that it was fair. I didn't even think we should be doing it at all with with any schools. And I want to clarify something that that isn't just a gap for one charter school. That's a, that's a gap all charters. I mean, the, the majority are performing arts and Chinese immersion. There's a couple others. There's four that our kids go to. But that's the total gap of all. All right. Anything else for our by board today? So what are what are the action items coming up? Who's doing what and when? So I've put on for your agenda for next week. Uh, continuation of this discussion. You all want to put your notes and thoughts together and uh, come up with a unified plan next week. Can I uh, come up with a draft kind of cycle of departments and you know some various options for three, five, seven years and then we can or, or if that's what you want to do. No, I, just, I, I have no objection to this <laughs> I'll be the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to work off of what we had here, right. and uh, just to move forward, I think that would, uh, it's a start for us to look at. So not always sure of seven years, excuse me. I, I was just looking for a clarification on um, what he was going to, yeah, updating know. this document, or are you, you talking the budget cycle? No, I meant like the, the um, instructions where we could tell all the, all the departments that it wasn't their year that this is your level funding year, and then going forward, you know, this is town hall, you know, right. whatever, yeah, and then I, I think someone else can do the, uh, the goals. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can work on the, I could take this and work on putting in some new goals. I was also thinking I could, maybe not now, maybe not for this, but also just working on the calendar, kind of framing what we do year round and mm -hmm. trying to set some dates to when those decisions can be made or when we should be talking about certain things to prep for that. And then maybe I, our, my our respective liaison positions so we can give you feedback. You know, I can do it for the town hall, general government departments, and yep. the choice yeah. of public yeah. safety because, mm -hmm. again, this is dated. And if you want any context on, like, something doesn't even make sense to you, it's in your appropriate to just call mm -hmm. either me or Joyce and we can fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's, I can say my calendar will probably have a lot of gaps in it because I don't have enough experience, but I can try to put something together. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So one place to go would be the budget document where we have a budget calendar. So there's a certain legal deadline, so we have to return it. Okay. But that's a good place to start in terms of the framework. And my final, final broken record on this, I am going to say to the school committee, we'll be looking at capital plan. And when they ask a logical question, should we be putting these things on the water article for May? No, this capital plan falls to me. Correct. Yeah. Okay. However, it would be nice to see your capital plan so we could update our spreadsheet and put it in there so that we can get a feel for what it looks like. 
Absolutely. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed since the last time Chris yeah. was in front of the Capitol Committee, but I'm happy that what goes in the school committee. After our school committee meeting, I don't think they're going to change anything. I'm happy. To okay. Be yeah. Happy. yeah. So here's, here's a question. Some of your capital upgrades can happen during the school year, but some of them, that in particular the ones involved in building renovation, should take place during the summer. Do you see anything coming up this summer that you're going to need? Funding I feel like our, the big thing that's coming up will be, I can't remember when we have to buy a bus. I saw in there <laughs> real quick, too. <laughs> so parking lot resurfacing. Yeah. Hopkins Academy parking lot resurfacing. Mm -hmm in for 2020 and the one I have I don't know if that's still one conversation we did have about that is if we can uh, get some forward motion on the fields it would make sense to do that probably around the same time yeah so um, yeah that's okay. yeah, it's somewhat connected yeah. to that yeah yeah mm -hmm. and where's the fields in the in the realm of it so the fields is one is already passed which we got support from CPA mm -hmm. and then yeah. another phase I want to say is two maybe Our yeah, but this the one. The spreadsheet I have doesn't have it in in there. But okay, yeah. All right, I'll make it, sure. It's old. It wasn't. It, okay, I I'll don't know what happened to the one that I had. That should be newer. So no worries. I'll find it. We'll yeah. talk about it on December, and I'll make sure you have yeah. a nice, beautiful up-to-date one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Until we're ready. Until you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hopefully by Thursday. You can <laughs> next week. After our next meeting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. After our next meeting. Okay. So we're not planning on this time frame and things like that at next week's meeting. It'll probably be the meeting after, or, or do you think that you'll have something for next week? Our, our next meeting is the 19th or 12th. So it's a short. I come up with a list. I'll try to put up something. something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I. I think I'll focus on the goals first, and then work on the calendar and see where it all ends up. Okay. Personal. Personal. Yeah. Thank you. Can we still do talked about that because that was uh, something I had received in the mail was a proclamation request uh, to we requesting that you consider joining dozens of city and county leaders across the country and officially recognizing January 20th to the 26th 2019 as school choice weekly week in Hadley and uh, <laughs> so <laughs> my <laughs> <laughs> we had talked that, that we had no. I would like to recognize that as a lot of people have, have many, many children and live here. I would like that for you, is what I would like. We have huge families and move to happy. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, don't, I just made one to make sure you knew that this was given to me, but that I don't think you would be acting on a motion that we pass. Thank you. <laughs> Second the motion. All right, all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. But it, it was addressed to be an honorable So I'm now calling her HJC. I guess I'm like RBJC. I guess they really don't know me. HJC. <laughs> 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 yeah, dishonorable. So thank you, guys. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. Let's see if I can get off this page. Mm -hmm. That'll be on that one. Hello, friends. Oh. Yeah.
Dispatcher appointment, and we will just hold that for the end when our Hadley police officers will address that. Uh, there's a request for a one day liquor license December 8th uh, and December 15th for at, to be held at V1 Vodka for a cancer um, fundraiser uh, promoted as Steph's Wild Ride. Um, one day liquor license for Western Mass Climbers Coalition to be held on December 14th at the Central Rock Gym. An intermunicipal agreement to be ratified for veteran services between the city of Northampton and the town of Hadley, which is an existing contract. Moving that forward. And then uh, cancellation of an IFB for a septic truck um, for the DPW. Oh, we're here to talk about that. I had a, I had a question for the police. I have a question on one of the policies. Is the chief out there? Right here. Oh, oh, there you are. Hello. Hi. Hey, I know I saw you go by the door. I didn't see where you sat. So on your um, medications that you on your policies of the EpiPen, uh -huh. um, are we carrying EpiPen? No. 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 With the uh, the AED policy is an update, and the EpiPen we have training in. Yes. Uh, for officers to use them in the event that they must, but we're not going to be carrying EpiPen. That's just that was my part of the protocol as we move forward in 21st century policing. That it's something that we want our people trained in in case we need to use it. I just know that they are expensive. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're so not that was be, my the dollar signs went up in front of me. So you know we would love to, but that's you know part of the issue, and yeah. we just want to be we just want to make sure that everybody knows how to use them in the event that we run into a situation where a parent or a teacher, um, you know, is too stressed out to be able to, to to apply the you know the medication that we want our, our people to be able to do it. Okay, and I did see that on several of the um, policies that uh, it's in coordination with the. Ambulance and Chiefs Bank enable. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. We actually, um, with the AED policy, we actually do the training. The fire chief actually does the training okay. for for uh, both police the and AED. fire. Yeah. Actually, it should come with the CPR training. It does. It First does. responder, CPR, AED. Correct. And high. Um, I do have a question for uh, <coughs> B1 Vodka. Mm -hmm. So. It looks like you've coordinated those two dates with the Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. um, what about the library? I didn't talk to the library. Okay. Um, could you do that too, just in case I, they have an event going on? Because yeah. I usually try to have them coordinate with both. Five, seven, nine, six, nine, Sounds good. So, I'll make a motion to approve everything if we're pulling out the um, dispatcher. Okay. Okay. So Second. Okay. 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 Any further discussion on them? I'm just subject to making sure that's cleared with the library. I just cleared with the library. Perfect. Sounds clear with the library. Clear with the library. Mm -hmm. library. Sounds good. We share part. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. And then we could have the police chief do the. Mm -hmm. Dispatcher appointment, please. Yep. So seated uh, next to Mitch is uh, Miss Barit Biyakadal. Uh, we call her B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's known uh, as B around the station. She is currently a full-time EMT with Action EMS and also works in their dispatch center. She graduated from Smith Academy in Hatfield and from UMass Amherst with a bachelor's degree in anthropology. 
Uh, previous to working for Action Ambulance, she also worked for National Amb Ambulance as an EMT and a dispatcher, and has previously worked for YMC Camp Dakota in Richmond, New Hampshire, Rock Ridge Retirement Community, and Linda Manor Extended Care, all of which enrolls uh, she worked with people of all ages. She comes highly recommended by her supervisor at Action EMS, who describes her as a fast learner and a quality employee. With her familiarity of the town, uh, employees of the police and fire department, as well as her previous experience, these training should go very quickly. Uh, she will have to attend a 40-hour basic telecommunicator uh, certification class, 16-hour state uh, 911 class, uh, and our department's standard on-the-job training. Um, it's with these, uh, these facts that I would recommend her to be appointed as a part-time uh, emergency dispatcher for the Hadley Public Safety Complex. What shift? It's going to be part time, so it'll be For any shift. Correct. Great. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Motion to approve the appointment. Second. Second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, B. Still working for action, too? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll see her in several. She's not going to have a personal life by the time we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Welcome aboard. All right. That takes that for the consent agenda. I guess we would go for public comments. Do we have any public comments this evening? None. None being. All right. I'll move on then. I'm going to pass over you right now, David. That's fine. And since we have, uh, we'll go to, we, we have taken off the uh, continuation of the public hearing that was settled uh, today before the meeting. Um, we will go to the Municipal Building Committee Coordination of Building Projects, Senior Central mm -hmm. Library, and Fire, sub fire Substation. <coughs> Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Finally, we got everybody's <laughs> got the messages, so it's good to have you. Um, so I guess our, our goal on this is to have your input um, since we're moving forward with our projects uh, on the timeline of coordinating and doing both projects at the same time. Um, so we just wanted to touch base with the Municipal Building Committee. Uh, and we're, of course, going to need to put people in different places and different spots. So, um, any thoughts on? Uh, yeah, we, we can go over some of that. Um, uh, you know, as as everyone was kind of anticipating this this approval, we didn't advance a lot of. Uh, new things in our committee, but we have had discussions over a couple of items of late pertaining to uh, the Goodwin uh, building, the Russell School, the parking lot, uh, and the possibility of bidding the two projects together as a single bid. Is there a specific uh, discussion item? Where would you like <laughs> to start exactly? Well, I guess the timeline of doing the two projects at the same time. Sure. Um, I, I think it, it probably was. It was a discussion item that was that was um, a couple of meetings ago at our municipal building committee. I was not able to to uh, attend that meeting, but uh, gentlemen, correct me if I'm wrong. I think our discussion centered around um, the fact that it, that that it was feasible to to put the two projects out together as as one uh, singular project. Uh, some of the committee members feel that the, the project, if, if bid as such, ought to have a, a sort of A and a B part to it so that a contractor could bid one item and the other item or both or whichever. Um, that's, that's a possibility for sure. I think um, there's some issues that I had personally about the, the project bid documents, and I guess I'll just kind of vet those here. Um, as you know, we have two designers, we have two OPMs, we have two buildings, um, and to put out a bid set, as you know, we have we have two 
important parts to the bid set, the drawings and the specifications. So the drawings we all recognize. Uh, the specifications essentially define the performance requirements and, and level of quality for the project. And generally those are, you know, three to five hundred pages for, a, for one of these projects. So as you can imagine, if we were to bid this, this set, we would have two of those right now because we have, a, we have two designers, we have two projects. Um, the economy of the work uh, for one contractor to, to do the project would, would be such that the, the items within those specifications were more or less the same, right? So that you could procure materials from one source, you could, you could follow one standard of care for the, for the project as a whole. Um, all of those items would have to be kind of reconciled, if you will. Um, so I don't know if either the Senior Center, Center Committee or the Library Committee has discussed how we might reconcile the package into one, but, but I think there would be a risk if we just simply had two document sets which covered everything from site work to electrical, you know, mechanical systems, and we got something that was sort of uh, apples and oranges. And I, I think we'd lose some of the economy of the, the project if we, if we didn't do that. And that might mean that the, con the, the, the designers would have to go and, and tweak some of the work that they've already done. And there's a risk there, of course, for additional design, which might cause us to lose some of the advantage of, of fitting the project together. So I'll kind of open that up for the two committees to see if there's any yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, there might just be some confusion because in our last discussion at the Senior Center Building Committee, um, you know, we're looking at the bid documents being ready in, forgive me if I'm wrong here, Phil, but it's late January, early February. Yep. I don't know if the library is going to be ready at that time to bid the project. I don't think so based on their schedule, but I'm not as familiar with it. So, um, when we had talked about bidding the senior center first, but including kind of prioritizing that follow-up uh, library bidding, uh, you know, having criteria in the bid process where perhaps that contractor would bid on the project again. And Phil might be able to speak to this better than I can, but um, that it what you guys are what yeah. you're saying is different than what we had kind okay. of thought and were thinking along. So, okay, uh, so a couple of things. Yeah. So um, the idea of combining the two projects, I just got word of that on Friday. So um, on November 14th at that select board meeting, I was tasked to com communicate with Mark Sullivan and go over bidding timing scenarios, construction logistics, all that. So I brought that tonight, but I'll first talk about the topic of uh, combining these two projects. So my first concern is, you know, the library project is connected to a state grant. I would be blown away if MBLC would allow that project to be combined with a, another project. I, I, I would bet my paycheck that they wouldn't allow that. Um, and the, the idea of combining these two at this point is extremely late in the game. Extremely late. Um, the effort to make them one project, uh, that's a lot. And you know, the idea is we're going to get going with bidding so we can decrease the amount of es escalation that's accrued on both projects. So. I think that's going the opposite direction, to be honest with you. Um, and then the other items, you know, like you said, David, you have a one design team that's already kind of produced drawings and specs, another design team that produced drawings and specs, and those same design teams, same, same with the OPMs. We entered into a contract with Hadley, understanding a construction control procedure and scope of work for this project and then for this project to combine that construction control effort where me as an OPM, Mark Sullivan as an OPM, all of a sudden the monthly payouts we're reviewing every month went from you know a five and a half, a five million dollar monthly payout to whatever that number goes to. Um, that's a different scope of work. And then the other concern I would have is, um, I, I don't know if combining these two projects <coughs> keeps these projects on budget. You know, if you take senior center budget, which the taxpayers approve, library budget, I, I don't know if that equates to a uh, a number that takes them on budget, over budget, under budget. I mean, we'd have to go through an estimate process to confirm yeah. that. I'd like to think you reduce the amount of markups, maybe they're under budget, but I don't know. You'd have to go through the estimate process to confirm that. I, there's just a lot to do to make that happen. I think there's maybe a little bit of 
miscommunication, but I think at least my thoughts was that we would pursue the two projects at the same time, not combine them. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. although we could certainly save money if we had done that, we're kind of past that at this point. So um, I, I think the bigger issue was starting construction either at the same time yep. or as close as possible. Okay. You know, they may have to be staggered by a couple of months, but and saving money with the cost es escalations and the borrowing and things like that versus the actual materials. But they also said that you probably wouldn't know who would you would get on some of these bid processes if you did the projects both at the same time, so that it would be uh, probably wiser to start with the senior center and have those bid documents go out to certain people and then followed up after the library had gotten their finalization from the planning board on their project and then go ahead and start that so that you're already a few months ahead with the senior center and then you would go into the library and then have the bidding go out onto their projects. So I agree but I also think we have talked about going back and talking to Mark about that idea and really vetting that idea a little bit more. Phil, Phil met with yeah, Mark. So, so I, I wonder if you would talk to us a little bit about that yeah, because there yeah, might well, be economy of the bidding at the same time too. We weren't sure and that was the investigation that was going to happen after the meeting. I just want to hear that. So it's five here. Thank you. Um, should we have the same? I got like another 15 copies here if you guys want to do that. One of our thoughts was, not, you know, we're not trying to combine them. What we wanted to do was have some review of the specs. So we be doing doing the restrooms. You don't have one type of toilet in <coughs> one and another model in, a, in the other. Mm -hmm. Just try to make sure that there is some type of uniformity between some of the uh, products. That's what we're asking. Yeah. And, and that that's what... That's, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a coordination effort that's easy. I, I think the one thing okay. I would add to that is, you know, this is... We can have the same toilets all the way around. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's the least of our problems. But the point being is to have both projects ready at roughly the same time so that a contractor could bid both at the same time if they chose to, or you can get two separate ones, depending. But well, I think it would be really helpful. Yeah, so can I like the get into that? Done, so maybe they yeah. could just... Yeah, yeah and again, right. apologies for misunderstanding the, the task here. It sounds like my committee had some th discussions that were a little bit different one from what I anticipated, mm -hmm. not having been at that meeting. That's okay. There's no yeah. So Mark Sullivan and I have been communicating over the past couple weeks on these two topics of bidding timing and, and construction logistics. So um, if you didn't get one of these, I'm sorry, but it's a two-sided paper that has the bullet points of those conversations. Um, so when we started talking about bidding timing, the idea was let's first figure out what are the realistic bidding scenarios um, now that a good amount of time's elapsed and so on. So the thought was, the, the first thought is, you know, the initial big picture schedule strategy of constructing the senior center, moving the senior center folks to the new building, and then starting a bait and demo of the exi existing building. Uh, that ship is sealed. If we tried to do that, we'd be cutting it too close to that. Um, June 2020 MBLC grant milestone. So that's really not worth uh, going over. And then the other thought is, you know, when you talk about the library project, that project has a couple scopes of work before they can actually start foundations. They have to abate and then they have to build and demo and then they can start foundations. So it would be, in, ha in my opinion, in Mark's opinion, it would be in Halley's best interest to go up to bid with that project, you know, as soon as their construction documents are ready that way you have as much time as you can get to um, get the building weather tight for bad weather. So the first bidding scenario after thinking about those thoughts is a, a staggered bid, which is essentially what we're all kind of saying right now is, so Senior Center Project maintains its current schedule where the goal is to have our bid set ready for bid mid-January, late January, with a goal to be starting construction early March to mid-March. And the idea is that early to mid-March is the same time frame when the library will be ready with their bid set. They advertise, they go up to bid, and um, essentially six to eight weeks post us breaking ground, they're breaking ground, so early May time frame. Um, so the thoughts on that is, you know, for contractors that are going into next year with, a, with financials that they can afford both projects, they're gonna attack those projects. You know, we'll, we'll get out, myself and Mark, we'll make phone calls and we'll advertise both projects coming out 
Um, so, you know, look for the library set and the whole thing. And I like to think we'll get real competitive bidding that way. Um, the other thought is the obvious, less time we wait to put the library set out, less escalation we're accruing. And then the other, you know, the longer you wait to put the library set out, the closer you're getting to those MBLC milestones and, and the concern there. So the other bidding scenario that, you know, Mark and I wouldn't recommend, but people might talk about is um, simultaneously bidding the project. So the first concern is um, we're not on the same time frame design schedule wise. So senior center project would have to go on hold for like a month and a half, two months to have library construction documents catch up with us. So that's a month and a half to two months of escalation. Senior center would have to approve. Um, the second point is, you know, if you're a contractor, you like the idea of these two projects all in one consolidated area, but the ideal situation is you can focus on one bid set, make it a, a competitive bid on that bid set, and then roll into the next estimate, the next project, as opposed to combining them. Then you might feel like you're crunched for time to put out two competitive bids. Uh, and then the third point is, you know, the mobilization of the two projects, you know, the initial startup, that happening all at once with both projects, that's a lot, a lot of moving pieces. It's, you know, so ideally it's, you know, the senior center setting up temp fencing. They're, they're, you know, getting rid of topsoil. They're uh, moving in with the office trail, the whole thing, erosion control. We're, we're doing that. We're getting our feet wet, and then the library starts and mobilizes. That, that's a better scenario than kind of all at once. So we're talking like a two-month uh, overlap? Yeah, six to eight started. week, yep. Okay. Yep. And then, um, and so I called a couple um, GCs that had originally pre the senior center project. They felt that time frame made sense. Uh, and they actually preferred that over at the same time. <laughs> like, I mean, that would basically accelerate the, the library's completion by what, seven months versus doing them separately or one after another. Is what we're looking at, right? So we're or looking to do them six to eight weeks. No, I'm saying versus doing them one after another, like the original. Oh, right, one after another. At least seven months. Yeah. 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 And Phil, based on where you're at with with Mark, I'm sorry, this Phil, Philip Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> They're bothered. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of the dates that are being thrown out there, yeah, I talked. Seems to, like that's yeah, I talked to Mark and, and yeah. Phil about okay. these dates, and it looks like it's going to be cheap. Okay. And Allison, so our committee would just roll right through them, right? We would just keep going in order to make this happen. So we're seeing our final design and going over the estimate with Phil later tonight after we adjourn here, and then we'll be making our plans for going forward. But okay. pretty much what is left is, is getting the construction documents. Um, you know, that's mostly in Phil's hand, so we can do a lot of other things. But yeah, so I mean, obviously a lot still has to happen in order for this to, you know, that has nothing to do with us. It has to do with your guys' decisions now. So that's really sort of why we're here. We feel like between our teams, we have a good plan that we would like to do, so we just really, uh, you know, need your blessing on it because other parts obviously need to have moved mm -hmm. in order for this to happen. But this is something that our committee is comfortable with. I assume yours is too, since we we'll completed this. So. so I'm going to just resurrect the. Um, we had a little bit of conversation at the last meeting about project management. Um, in it. I think when you look at it right now, you know, originally we had this like a linear process going on. Um, subsequent to these projects, then we had the approval for the North Hadley substation. So from a town perspective, we're going to have these two multi-million dollar projects going on simultaneously, and then we're going to have a third one starting in North Hadley. Um, I, I don't feel like we've got the bandwidth to do that well without without some additional assistance so one of the things we talked about at the last meeting of the meeting before was um, seeing if we could figure out how to hire a, a call it a clerk of the works I mean we have OPMs responsible for their respective projects but somebody to fly cover if you will um, in in a role to do coordination and communication. I mean, the opportunities for missteps here are significant. Um, and just a miscommunication, a misunderstanding <coughs> can wind up with two projects of that nature costing us hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm um, wondering if we could 
talk about that. I mean, I think it's something. Well, we actually have three projects going because the sub fire station committee is ready to go for this. For this yeah, that's what I said. So we'd have these two, and then that one's going to overlay. Well, so I feel like we, as a select board, need to have somebody who is day to day tasked with the communication and coordination of those projects. Um, We've help. always had a clerk of the works on any big projects. We had it on the school and we had it on the public safety complex. We had clerk of the works for so both of those projects. We each have yeah. a clerk of the works, too. There will be clerk of the works yeah. on each project. No, so yeah. what I'm talking about is an overarching, so this, we'll call it a board. We, we need a town need a board. Board. Project, project, project manager. Board. Yeah, we don't, we don't have anybody on town staff who's got the skill set or the time to do it. We certainly don't have anybody on a volunteer basis who has the skill set or the time to do it. I think we owe it to the taxpayers to hire a professional. Um, and I know that, you know, Colliers and probably D.A. Sullivan and, and some folks have people that could do that. Um, the more I think about it, I'm not really sure it's the best to have the same organization do it, yeah. but, you know, something right. we could talk about. But we would need to have um, funding for it. And I guess my question is, um, could we, and I have no idea what the number is. I'm going to throw out a number. I'm going to call it $100,000. That could be outrageously low or high. I don't know. But if we can, if everybody agrees that we should do something like that, and we can find out how much it costs, can we squeeze that money out of the three existing project budgets to make it happen? We don't have an extra penny in, in the subfire station. And, and everybody, all three, are going to say the same thing. <laughs> no, we don't. Because we and don't. I'm not just saying that. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, we looked at it last <laughs> night on ours, and we're right to the penny. Right. So nobody has a contingency budget left. We do, but that needs to stay there because we're going to get through construction. Yeah. It's the fluff that I would love to see isn't there. Yeah. yeah. Both fire and senior center. So, and for the library, we've already volunteered to help pay for swing space. Mm -hmm. So I think some of our money that we could use for that, mm -hmm. we might, I mean, Allison would speak better to that, but I think we have, we're giving it to swing space. Mm -hmm. um, we can switch that, I guess. But, um, I mean, my, my concern is, again, back. One, one misstep and everybody's contingency I, budget budget's going to be blown out of the water anyway. Right. I thought I heard you saying at the last meeting that this person was going to do uh, less with new construction and more with organization of moving and timing of who's going where and when. Yeah, I, I think the idea, well, I think it would be both because I don't think we need to explain to anybody in the room how, it's, how we work and what works well and what doesn't work well. So we're going to have again, multi-million dollar projects going on where at, at any given point in time, Phil and Mark are going to be dealing with construction issues. You know, some, something's going to go bump in the night and there has to be a coordination. There's going to be a delay with charter. It's usually the utilities. I mean, some, something will happen. And that will throw the whole schedule off. But there may be dependencies between the, depart the projects and Decisions are going to have to be made, and some of those may have to ultimately come back to the town, meaning the select board. We're meeting every other <coughs> week, you know, and we don't really have somebody assigned to this. So it would just seem to be a prudent thing to have a, a I'll call it a coordinator, to deal with these three projects. And to your point, Jane, in advance of that, we, if we agree on the schedule tonight, well, right now I'm all in. Um, if we agree on the schedule tonight, we immediately need to start putting an action plan in place and we need somebody to cross the T's and dot the I's and go around and interview everybody who's affected, make sure everybody's needs are being met, you know, what's a need, what's a want, all that good stuff. We're not going to be doing it, the Municipal Building Committee isn't going to be doing it, so it, it, it begs an additional resource, I think. I wish we knew how, I, I mean, it's not your fault, but I kind of wish we knew how much it yeah. was so that we could figure out how to make it work. I, it's not your fault that we don't, but I think, but I think, I think I have people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of them's raising his hand right now. Yeah. Well, I, I would only, I mean, so what, what you have ultimately is a program, right? Because right. you have free buildings. I mean, so I've, I've dealt with program managers that mm -hmm. essentially do what you're describing. We have some very well qualified OPMs that can manage the individual projects. I think somebody overseeing that 
if you had a town engineer or someone to that effect, <coughs> would be, that would be a great solution. Um, we do have a project consultant budget, as you recall, which has been approved and supplemented. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's on life support. There's not a lot of money there, but it's, it's something you could start with and potentially supplement on the next vote. Um, just saying, you know, there's a thought, but. Do you know how much is left in that kitty? I, I don't I'm know. thinking 20,000, but David is certainly, I think it's 25,000. Okay. So this is the town wide OPM. Yeah. We gotta make sure that the last, yeah, and we can. There's, there are two budgets. There's the on-call consultant, which I think has 30,000 in it, but we're using that. Yeah, we got, a, the, we got the the some bills that we gotta pay. But, Let's yeah. say twenty twenty five thousand. Yeah. David, do you know how much one would cost? Any idea? It's an advance of, of over and above that number, I'm sure. It's, but it's, it's well, a the start. number the number you described is probably low. The hundred yeah. 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 yeah, it's yeah. low. Yeah. Uh, I think the uh, critical I don't think we paid that period to have <laughs> oversight or a coordinator would be between the January first senior center bid period mm -hmm. and then breaking ground on the library because the more important, I mean, the OPMs, they can talk to each other, they can coordinate uh, actual construction events. Um, the issue is gonna be coordinating all the various departments and moving people and renting space. And I mean, if we're gonna use the church, we've got to talk to the diocese and get lease agreements and everything else. Uh, that's where we're gonna run into the biggest delays when we don't have anywhere to go or anywhere to put people and we're ready to break ground. So even if we could plan on just that, four months or six months yeah. with a person like that, I think it could save a lot of money and a lot of hassle on the road. So mm -hmm. I don't know what, how that would work as far as a six month contract with someone or, or what, but um, I mean, I'm, I'm for this schedule. I think this is a, a, a good way forward. I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but it's, um, yeah, should we just make a motion to approve this schedule? Yeah, and yeah. I'll second that. I made the motion. Yeah. 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 Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, we're talking about we would approve it. Why don't we just approve it? Yeah. Yeah. We should probably bring something up. For the discussion. Joyce, yeah. You mentioned on it the fire substation project. So currently, that schedule is for us to go with the bid kind of mid late March, which is in line with library. So um, myself and Joyce and the rest of the fire station building committee would have to coordinate on, you know, maybe. We essentially stagger library and fire station, like staggering senior center and library. So maybe. But there's not really any coordination as far as temporary space or. No, no. Like I'm just more talking yeah. about the the idea of bidding simultaneously and not mm -hmm. doing that. That's yeah. what I'm about. Okay. And we can do that. We can fire station building committee. Okay. We can find out what we have and then and yeah. go to our source and see if there's. And I know he has somebody in his group that probably could help us, but I don't know what the logistics on uh, if we on uh, hiring somebody like that. Do we have to go through a whole big process to do that? Do we have somebody in house that has probably that in his house that could probably help us to at least start it, this whole thing out. Especially with this It's demolition. not it's not something you have to bid on. Okay. It, it's um, it's if it's under a certain amount. Yeah, but uh, I think we're above that certain amount. Well, for the time being, we're not. Though. Well, yeah, we I mean, do phase one. We do phase that. one. Yeah, for a phase one, you could set up like a not to exceed. I don't know if the number is right. 15 k or 20 k, mm -hmm. or 25 yeah, k, whatever, whatever the number yeah. is. Right. Yeah. Maybe what do we that. Get for that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we, you're right. The, the big critical thing is is the getting everything prepared for the demolition and getting right. that coordinated right. properly. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a lot of logistics there that we have to deal with. Because in, in reality, if we're going to be on the schedule. Um, I guess like that tomorrow. We can start tomorrow as far yeah. as talking to the diocese and, and whatnot mm -hmm. for lease agreements. So, so I, have, I have a motion and a second on the table. And is there any other further discussion on, on this piece? May I ask a question? Uh, Phil, I suspect you and Mark have discussed um, contractor lay down areas and staging. Is there any concerns over uh, the very limited stagger in the construction where one contractor would be on top of the other? How the lay down areas would work? You know, you're, de you're demolishing. The senior center building, that's the construction access per se for the senior center. Uh, any, anything you can add in terms of that? Well, so I mean, in the construction logistics plan and the bid set that we previously issued, senior center set, that, you know, that showed essentially the library broken up in two phases. So we're using the north entry phase one, south entry phase two. Um, but yeah, the property's tight. 
the library construction zones even tighter. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to continue. It's going to be ongoing. It's not going to be something where we coordinate now prior to bid and we figure it all out now. Um, we're going to need two GCs on board and hear what they have to say, what they feel is the best location for office drills and so on. Um, so it's going to be a process throughout construction. But we've talked about it and, you know, to answer your question on the concerns, yeah, we lied there. I said there wasn't concerns, but I mean, it's, I, I, it's not concerns that are, you know, um, causing any, any issues uh, to move forward. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the senior center itself when it's demolished. Uh, yeah, the setback requirements for the demolition work are probably going to take up one or both of the driveways, and then, yeah, you know, we have an issue with, with construction access for the senior center. I don't yeah, know that could be addressed somehow. It, it, it's something the contractors will just have to deal with. Right. Now it'll, we'll, we'll it'll affect it the bid price as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, demolish it as quickly as possible yeah. and get it cleaned up. <laughs> well, 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 that's bulldoze. a critical point. Yeah. Get the right contractor to do the demolition mm -hmm. because there are some that can take three days while others can take weeks to do it. Yeah, so we get the big one. Is the demolition contract going to be the same contract as the construction it's contract? A it's a library issue. Well, I'm, well, I'm looking at you, but I'm really. <laughs> 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 it's yes. in the library yes. bid set. Yeah. Is that yes. what you asked? Yep. Yeah. It's in the library. Yep. I was only offering that maybe you could demolish the senior center first, get it out of the way, and then start mm -hmm. the senior yeah. center construction. Can we do that separately? If we can get everybody out of there quickly enough. And yeah, then you'd have to advance the yeah. relocation efforts. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the relocation effort really is the number one task here. And that's a different task coordination <coughs> than coordinating construction activities once the buildings get going. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't think you need a professional engineer. I mean, that's the have I don't think you need one to do a coordination, arranging for space and you know, making sure everybody has a home and keeping people's feet to the fire on that. I mean, no, it I sounds think, like a planning thing. I think you're right, but it's just, it's going to take someone basically full time working on it. Yeah, right. I think what right. we're saying though is maybe you need like a planner for that sure. part and not the engineer. Maybe they were cheaper. For later. <laughs> <laughs> like a lower yeah. pay. Yeah, I, I think when town engineer was thrown, I was just in, in other larger oh. municipal governments yeah, that yeah, have right. that, that position sure. in house, so we wouldn't even be having the conversation. Because okay. that's what they would that's do. Correct. Oh yeah, sorry. But you're right, it's just a project manager. Right. Well, one thing we had talked about, and we can do it seriously or not, but we voted on Gary taking it over because <laughs> he's familiar with the buildings. Uh, he's a town employee, of the whole but he would be able to help with the coordination if that were acceptable. Um, I can see Gary being a critical resource, but I, yeah. I, I mean, he's good. Again, we don't want to take people out of their regular jobs because then we're just creating a, we're creating another gap in an issue for all the things that Gary wants not doing while he's doing this. Yeah. But he does know the buildings the best. He knows. Oh, yeah, he'll be know. instrumental in Yeah, so he, he needs yeah. some involvement somehow. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we can yeah. start to direct as much as time and resource that happens for this and it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So are you suggesting Another possibility is hiring a backup for Gary to take care of the things he would be doing. Is no. that what you're saying? No. <coughs> no. No, that's not yeah. in the budget there either. Yeah. And part of his job is maintenance, so I would kind of funnel some of that in that direction. He's coordinated some of the stuff that we started already, trying to get some bids together for it, if we go the source of doing some minor mod modifications. <coughs> so we got all those those prices together, we got some coordination together with regard to that. He's, he's brought up some valuable points with regard to the senior center mm -hmm. and with regard to timing on that. So he, he is a valuable source and we need to use him on that. Uh, so some of the work's been done, I mean, and, and like David just said, we got to start this tomorrow if we're going to meet these deadlines. So. We got to vote first. All right, so <laughs> motion on the table. Uh, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we got to do it. Oh, okay. Now we got to do it. Get the feet going. Do, do we what? have any updates on the. Yeah, so uh, on <coughs> the, uh, we got in touch with the diocese. They worked through the Colebrook uh, Realty Services. 
So Colebrook has been in touch with me. They have a process which involves the local parish council before it goes to the bishop in Springfield. So um, they're putting together some ideas and they have to observe their own local process. But we've had that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you spoken with Colbrook? Or? Yeah, Colbrook, uh, Ed Shippey is the person I've talked to. Okay. Did they give a hint at a timeline yeah. as far as? Uh, they have, they gave me some homework, which Suzanne was able to help me out with, and I have to get that information back to them <coughs> about a timeline. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to hear that the actually is going to take four months to decide. Right. No, well, we need to. We'll, we'll do the best we can yeah. with what we have to work with. Yeah. So, uh, can we talk a little bit about space uh, while we have the committee here? Yeah, that's why they're here. <laughs> so, as far as Hadley Media, I think, and the planning board, those were the two biggest issues as far as, far as finding space to go. So, um, is, is there, <coughs> the library, is there usable space for Hadley Media in the library that they could, they could move into? Is, uh, yeah, we've already talked with okay. Hadley Media about I mean, I don't know specifically. They haven't told me, you know, they need X number of square feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I actually uh, met with them today because I'm their liaison. Yeah. Okay. So they need a desk and a they need the server. They they don't need a whole lot of space. <coughs> right. Yeah. But they are they are welcome to use our space upstairs if it works for them. We'd be happy to have them. Yeah. So at this point, they're basically covered. They're covered as long as the library gives them a thumbs up. So the, the issue with Hadley Media is that. Wherever they go, they know that they're going to be there for a while, obviously, so a while. And so they, we're going to need to have the drop moved. And so it's a matter of scheduling that with charter. And the concern is always, again, when you're dealing with the utility companies, actually you were sharing that with us at the class meeting, uh, we hear horror stories about delays. So that's something that we would need to get on right away. So the other thing is we haven't voted as trustees, but I'm going to tell you there's four of us here, so it just becomes a matter of an official. So. And David, I don't see anyone there today. So, so yeah, yeah, I don't think we have an issue at all. So that, uh, they have a budget to move. Okay. If I may, um, the the building is good a shape as it's in lacks power. Okay, there's a severe restriction on the amount of power that can be tapped into the existing panel. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where we're at with that, Tim, but I think we would want to speak to the, the media folks to make sure we we can obtain enough circuits sure. for that. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have temp power at the construction site, right? So maybe they could use, I don't know, work something. Well, the, prob the problem within the building is, if I may, we started this whole project with um, the library and the ceiling, and that's been ongoing for years, mm -hmm. and it's been problematic. We know that there's knob and two wiring, so we were trying to phase this, the, the, the lighting issue in the, in the Goodwin, and the problem is it just creates other code issues. <coughs> the, the circuit breaker boxes are None, we'll just say, they, they lack code. They're old. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they are, they're, they're safe as they are, but we don't want to play around with them. Uh, I, I think that there's enough power that goes upstairs to the second floor for media, uh, based on some discussions I just had. I, I think that's fine. What we're looking for, the big problems certainly was TV5, and the um, planning board. Planning board brought up their issue with um, uh, storage. I think what, what we came out of our meeting was we can go to the state, get some waivers on using the second floor for, because of the accessibility issue, because what we'd like to use that for is temporary storage space. We can, we can it's structurally sound, it can take load, problem that we're faced with and then why we haven't used that second floor is that the ceiling is is being decoupled from the structure and any type of vibration brings sections down it's not well in, uh, intact so so the bottom know, line can we get where we put yes. the planning board 
we're going to put the planning board in this building, this building. but their problem was storage. Was storage. We're going to put big, storage over big. there. We're just yeah. going to have to bite the yeah. bullet and say, guys and everybody else that needs storage, it's going to be that second floor. Period. Period. I mean, as a plan what? B, we can use Goodwin. 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 Wait, are you saying the second floor of the Goodwin for the planning board documents too? Some of it, yes. Yeah. Do they I mean, require we, we actually use that space. I mean, <laughs> it's not It's not a, just a walked out. Yeah. How much do they need? What do we use the space for the library for? Right now, we're not using could, it. Could, if That's if it doesn't work for the library, could all so of the storage So can we put the planning board stuff in here? No, we don't have any type of good um, uh, climate control over there. How about uh, in here? Anything that store. we keep on storing over there is going yeah. to be um, compromised That's what we were planning time. on. Tim, hadn't we initially planned for over here? For storage, the next room. For the, the planning board. That's purpose? where their room is. They don't think that there's enough room for all of their files. Part, part it, of their problem was they said they needed immediate access. access so if they're everything. having a meeting, say at Hopkins for a meeting, they need to access the files from there. But I mean, that's why can't they have their meetings them here on yeah. Tuesday night? I would think they just come back here. Just come back like here as they yeah. usually did, and that room yeah. have their yeah. files yeah. in it. I mean, let's yeah. not get crazy here. Yeah. Well, Simple. That was that was the discussion. Well, all right. Well, let's make a decision. I'm in favor of that. All right. Planning board comes back. All their stuff goes over there. Had the media goes to the library again. This is after it has to be fully vetted, and the seniors go to everything, um, and then is the church, accessible to everybody. And then Jenny, our park and rec. We don't want to forget about Jenny. We talk to her. We have that floor plan. She's really. <coughs> There was only two departments that came to uh, to talk about some of their issues, and she was one of them. Mm -hmm. She brought up a good point. She just wanted to flip flop from another uh, from across the uh, hall on the first floor. Chalked with Board of Health, they had no problem with that. So we have Jenny in the front room where Concom is right now. Oh, okay. So she was fine with that size, with those modifications to the room. Uh, Board of Health was okay uh, going to the other portion of um, the assessors. So it, I think we have a good game plan for this building. You know, we have some dollars that we have to spend to do that work. And I think we need to look at some better furniture to get rid of some of the desks and get some better furniture for people to work around. Oh, let's go shopping at UMass. Or workstations. Right. Workstations <laughs> in life. It was a large sure. house. Huh? So, yeah, just to interrupt you, Tim, would that be something that this alternate person we're talking about would do and would help with? Or do you guys have enough capacity to be able to handle that between yourselves, Gary? I, I think. To handle those renovations <laughs> and that furniture. And I think everything. if we it sounds like this bring is somebody on board somebody. Yeah. that we're talking about, yeah. Yeah. it would be instrumental in making sure that everything. Uh, it's done properly yeah. at, and coordinated at the proper time. Yes, yeah. that would help. But Gary's instrumental in trying to make sure that oh, yeah. day to day. Yeah, yeah. So done. Yeah, yeah. He's done a lot of work two days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one right, one so other possibility is that there might be surplus space available over at the parish hall. So yeah, that's the backup plan. Right. Yeah, backup. Yeah, but yeah. for right now, the planning board will come here. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. TV five will go upstairs on the second floor. Right. But just if there's any. You know, pulling of hair and gnashing of teeth. There is a plan B, and the plan B would that if everything goes according to Hoyle over there, they have classroom space that could accommodate storage or individuals, but we would have to pay for it. I mean, so again, whatever we negotiate with the diocese for rent, that would have to be factored in. So, can I ask the senior center um, when you move, if, if you move to the the church. Mm -hmm. you're, obviously, you're not going to bring every piece of furniture. Right. So, do you, right. you, do you have money, or will you be able to store some of that furniture, say in storage containers, or where? Or what? What do you think you would? Right now, we're working on what do we keep, yeah. what do we need to bring over. I think we talked a little bit about that. Right. Majority of what we need to bring are our our files right. to continue doing the human human mm -hmm. service um, piece, along with our computers, have the Wi-Fi. Um, and phone listings configured over there. Storage, we haven't figured out a ton. I know that our fitness equipment will be one issue. We have a treadmill, um, a recumbent bike and stuff that'll be going into the new building. Um, there's only, I wanna say, three machines plus a weight rack. 
we might even be able to come over. But as I'm hearing you talk about there's more classrooms and da 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 da, I'll just say that when I went over there, they had three classrooms. Well, three and a half. So one classroom is already taken by the Knights of Columbus. Mm -hmm. Another classroom would be either two of our staff or all three of us mm -hmm. in one room. And then we were, and then they have a small room that we'd like to, you know, maybe have alternate pro like some of our small programming things in so that they're not sitting in the same space we're using for office space when we're having confidential conversations with people. So that that really leaves one classroom that might be the storage for whatever we have for file cabinets, da 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 and then a, like a half a classroom down the other end of the hall that's unrelated that we don't need. Mm -hmm. And then we'd be doing the exercise and using the kitchen all in the big parish center part. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how much else. Well, my, my thoughts were that um, the mobile storage kind of shipping containers, things like that, that can be secure. The stuff, boxes. Like pods. Yeah, like pods, something pods. similar to that. Um, as long as it's not sensitive to climate control, if you got treadmills or extra furniture, things like that, I mean, we can pack those up and, and store them at the DPW or wherever Russell. that's that's on. on well, that could yeah. go at Russell's. Or yeah, or at Russell or wherever, and it'll be a heck of a lot cheaper than paying for rental space inside of a building. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's you know, it, the less stuff you have to bring, the better. Yeah, Obviously we don't keep have to bring a ton of stuff <laughs> right. over there. Right. I mean, most of what we do is mobile. Right. There are programs we run out of, you know. Our exercise is the biggest thing, and that's people oriented with a facilitator. We have some hand weights and stuff like that, but that's all easy to move over. It's one bin plus a weight rack. It's not a big deal. Um, that doesn't need to go into storage, but the, like I said, the exercise equipment would need to go in, and then we'd need to bring a couple file, locked file cabinets. The town nurse is a whole other different story because um, she has a lot of confidential and sharp containers and things like that that have to be constantly under lock and key. I don't know if that's available there in addition to what we'll already need and she would need a confidential space which might take that other half of classroom, not the one way down, but the programming. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how much else you can squeeze in over there if we're going to keep doing everything we're doing. Mm -hmm. Just like to squeeze in as little as possible. I know it's going to be it's going to be tight down the hall. It's going to be tight over there. It's going to be a miserable. I don't picture time bringing break, a lot right. over there. Right. We don't function that way. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're going to try and just do what we can until the new building is built. You know, we're right. all just going to work towards just making whatever we need to do to make it mm -hmm. okay until yep. it's up and running. Yep. So yeah, unfortunately, you know, we can all we can all just bide our time and just you know go go with it you know yeah, do the best absolutely. we can. Absolutely, it's about the about the bottom are, line for all of us. There are departments so that we have to coordinate some of their stuff. Yeah, that the I DPW we're going to have to they they have stuff. And that's the they don't get to they don't need to look at that stuff. <coughs> that, our thought process was put that on the second floor. Good one for the time being. Yeah, the water sewer. Yes, the water paper. sewer stuff. That's up on the third yes, floor. Yes, on the third of the floor. The senior center. And there's other. And the there's historical. Other historical. Commission. Water. Has anybody talked with them? That'll be part of the. Yeah, the ongoing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, our our biggest concern was seniors mm -hmm. planning We're board. We could be pretty mobile. And as parking long as rec. You know, just to get those settled at what we're going to have them because they have meetings, you have your activities. So yeah. those are the big things and all the papers and files and things like that. We'll figure out where they can go. Um, but the people are, you know, are what we really needed to settle on tonight. Yeah, I don't see that being an issue with that space mm -hmm. for us. Okay, so that, that's, we don't need a motion on that at all you want to? Yeah, we can make a motion that we'll put bring the planning board back to the town hall to use this room for the meetings, the front office there for storage, and then the uh, park, and rec. Park, and park and rec will be here. Sorry. <laughs> um, Hadley Media to the library and uh, Senior Center negotiate with the diocese for church space. Okay. 
second. Any further discussion on that? Okay. You can get fast here. All those in favor? Um, well, no, uh, that's after. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Maureen, what did you have to say? So uh, maybe long term you might think of scanning. Oh, we did, we, did you miss that conversation we had? We had we oh, had a conversation yeah. during our uh, tri board tri meeting. Oh, okay. So we oh. have already uh, anticipated doing some laser. Who's going paperless? Yeah. Yes, well, that's a, exactly benefit. what we're talking about. Yeah. Go ahead. It's not going to happen before. Yeah. No, I understand that. Yeah. Long term. Yeah, you know, yeah. 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 Long term. It's in. Yeah. And um, do you ever use this space as a swing space, or is this always set up? You want to do some swing dancing in here? <laughs> <laughs> swing no, space. No, I, I for mean in terms of like a um, another department using no, this need, space during the day. We need meeting space. Yeah, it's the only the only place we have, and it's where the um, TV five. We have the media what, drops here and everything. Yeah. But during the daytime, people do use this. For meetings all the stuff, time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know if it was yeah. like that. It's always where used. the department head meetings are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's always used. People come up here just to get away from their offices sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. just put things on casters <laughs> and move them around. And, yeah. yeah, during budget season. <laughs> yeah. <pretty good>. Jeez. <laughs> okay, so we got that settled. Um, How about the, um, I mean, we can talk about it again, but hiring a person at our having some kind of coordinator, program coordinator, I think program we're looking, manager. I think we're we looking into that when we find out how much money we have. Okay, we're going to wait on that, so we vote yeah, on that we'll next week. Yeah, we'll next I'll week we can. David on that. We'll see exactly how much we can pull out of wherever. Yeah, but I'd like to make sure we, we talk about the skill sets, too. Yeah. So have yeah. a conversation about that. Should we do yeah, that again next week? Is there a job week? description for the, felt, the person you have now available? And, uh, for a building committee? Couldn't it be two different people? Well, he's a we town. He's a town employee one. that they're talking about. Which I thought there was a fund for hiring a part-time uh, consultant. There, there is, a, yes. but that's what. Yeah, we need a job description. Yeah. Job so, description. so we need to get a job description we, together. We and work in development yeah. with, with the OPM. That'd be great. Yeah. Yes. Is there any way to resolve something like that together for next week so that way we could yeah move forward because uh, we're getting tight on time. So yeah. okay. Yeah, that would be great. Make it better. And then the other thing that we needed to talk about is the, um, after all is said and done with the Goodwin Memorial Library, the planning board has um, put restrictions on us for uh, the use of that building and parking. Of course, we can't use the parking, believe it or not, anywhere else. So I guess somewhere down the road, I'm not sure what we're going to do right. with, with that build. Another building we have to think about. Yeah, we we've, we've had discussions and honestly not come up with a scenario that work that works perfectly for that building with the limited parking. As you know, I had proposed a ancillary parking lot over mm -hmm. here at Russell School, and uh, to our knowledge, I don't think Marlowe's had had moved that forward much, other than getting maybe one bid on something. Mm -hmm. We had not engaged a designer yet to do that work. Um, they put in for a grant, I believe, for it, but I don't think. Any Okay. Yeah, but, so. but there'd be time for that because yeah. the time. Yeah. I mean, so the, the the part that is connected to that, of course, is Russell School, and I'll you know when we have more time to discuss that, I'll, I'll engage you guys mm -hmm. on, on our findings. Um, suffice it to say that the cost of uh, fixing the building has gone up substantially since the DRA report. So. The longer we wait, the more it's going to cost the town if we want to maintain or keep that building for town use. Um, and then if we were to build a parking lot, then we'd have to, as David, you had said at another meeting, we'd have to consider whether we were cutting off a portion of a private property owner's parking if that were to become privatized. All, all considerations, and, and uh, honestly, that's going to be a longer conversation. There you go. Package deal. North Hadley Hall, Russell School. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, to knock yeah. it down. <laughs> and want to throw in the good one for that one, too, so we don't have another building to take care of. Actually, I, I, that's what they did up in Salisbury. They actually demolished the old library and put a new library in its place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that they didn't have to think about doing another building. But. So the 
because I think town our town center. Yeah, so well, it's a town center. We're looking at so about isn't it there? We're looking at about sixteen hundred dollars a square foot for that building to be renovated. So wow, uh, you, oh, for you, Russell School. Yeah, yeah, yeah so you yeah. can imagine the buildings that we're building new. That square footage costs quite a bit less, as we know. Yeah. Um, so what's the value to the town? And I guess that will be the question if we decide to pursue a non-binding vote, either spring or fall, um, to see what the town's thoughts are on that. Mm -hmm. Of course, we did that in North Hadley, and we still own the North Hadley Village Hall. Right, so yeah. uh, we're a little reluctant as a, as a committee to advance that non-binding vote and then sort of maybe sit on the attention for a while. Yeah. Yeah, another five years. Yeah. We'd sure love to see something happen. Well, Sooner we have, we are out to bid. We're out to bid. Out to bid. Out to bid. Mm -hmm. We're waiting right? for them to come in next for week. For the realtor or for uh, actual for bids for the realtor? Realtor. 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 Mention that real quick for the camera, that anybody that might be watching as far as... Uh, yeah, so uh, <coughs> we have a bid out for anybody who uh, uh, would like to help out the town for uh, sale of North Hadley Village Halls. Uh, so we're looking for realtor, commercial uh, real estate broker, any, anybody who is in real estate uh, is eligible to bid on this project. Commercial or residential? So commercial or residential, and talk to Jennifer because uh, she's managing that, uh, that bid. I guess we were, want to bid on. Well, we just have to approve uh, uh, the EDM's contract to redo the construction documentation for the senior center. Okay. Was, was there an update on that? Yeah, there's an update on that. So um, we got a revised one. So if that could get pushed to next week's. Oh, okay. So like board meeting. Okay. That'd okay. be ideal. Okay. Uh, anything else from the municipal? That you can think oh, of. I'm aware. I mean, we're always available if you'd like to. I was to join you again. So next week you're gonna, you'll have a, a form of description for a clerk of the work slash program manager role, right? And possibly how much? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. All right, so we'll put that on the agenda for this. Already time. done. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Look for a few future meetings. Tim, I, I can summarize that the, the sub fire station committee voted last night not to sell any part of the property up in our okay. Correct. They said not to sell it. They have asked again. Oh, you so mean the portion of the the one on either side. Yeah, yeah the butters. Who's going to get back to parties? Well, I just yeah. wanted to clarify that. With yeah, the and, you know, our role has been that we yeah. we lack uh, public uh, or town-owned space for for the future. And uh, as much as we like the like to preserve that open space, I mean, who knows in 100 years if we'll have even less space. So it seems to make sense. I hope that we could be to get some park space, open space, recreational space out of that, uh, out of that parcel at some point. Until even we need the time that we may need it for something else. Yeah. OK. Um, so I just wanted to that we would get back to them, um, that we would not be selling that property. If I could make one more comment as part of the municipal building committee, um, we uh, we're trying to work with all the all these committees to to be helpful in establishing um, 
the standard of care and quality for the projects, um, making sure that the construction and the you know all, all the drawings and specs are, are up to the the quality that we hope for for town buildings. And we know that in the past some buildings haven't been built as well as we'd like, and we we have all I think the safeguards necessary to ensure that doesn't happen again. That said. I'd like to just advocate that our committee gets copied on some of the progress drawings and specifications so that we really can look them over and speak to them and, and probably even have some of the OPM and other uh, persons, you know, at our meetings to, to just talk through that. How's the cooperation been so far? Uh, well, we have representation on all the committees and they come back and um, I think sometimes they feel like they've been beaten up when they went to the other meetings and then they come back and they tell us what they they were told um, but I think it could be more cooperative if we were to have some of those persons attend our meetings and you know go through that way you mean from so the from, from the individual building committees and, and, and also just getting copies of progress sets I mean we're running kind of fast and loose with with deliverables right 60 90 percent 100 percent we're going to bid in january so um you know we just we just would like like a set of drawings and specs to look we have over and sub fire station committee just we just went over the ones that we had last yeah. night at ours so we got the big set and then there's a half set size so um certainly i think they're available with mike um if you want to take the half set size and yeah and we're take not looking to, to put meeting. the brakes on anything we just we just want to engage and be helpful to yeah. these committees oh but please feel free to see mike about those he has okay. them i don't know if he had to file them someplace else today i think but i think mike does have them i'll i'll get to mike so that he gets them to half set to tim or tim you want to touch base yeah, I with touch mike with you. I'm with him okay and that is a role that you know again keep coming back to as a program manager i mean that's Again, everybody has their their mission, their charge, and <coughs> go full steam ahead. And that's how, in the past, we've gotten ourselves into trouble with some corners that got cut or decisions that got made at the last minute for monetary reasons. So, I agree with you. But that's um, it would be good to have somebody who has everybody's interests in mind here to make sure that you know there's a checklist. Did this get run by the minister building committee? I understand from the individual committee's perspectives, they don't want to be hung up because they're waiting for you guys to meet to review something that's an added added layer, you know. If that had ever happened, I, I might agree that would be a risk, but, but sure, we're but not, it hasn't, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. We can well, meet we, on demand. We've not been asked to look at anything as a committee, and, and I think the role of the committee maybe is perceived differently by each of these sub, these building committees. Um, you know, we, we do have a representative there, but a uh, few of them have, since we've started the building process, really come to us and talk through some of the logistics mm -hmm. like we like we talked about tonight. So I think uh, all I'm asking is that you all advocate for that mm -hmm. process and mm -hmm. communication to work. And uh, we're here to help. We really don't want to break the process or slow things down. We just want to be helpful. Well, I think you always add to it. So I think, you know, it's a, it's a good thing you all have expertise on your committee that certainly adds to uh, on some of these other committees that they should be having so I think it was great to have you all in the same room tonight yeah. 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 yeah it's the first time for a very long time yeah, yeah it is mm -hmm. so that was good thank you but it is an unbalanced so yeah, they're unbalanced uh, committees with regards to the respect of uh, construction design yeah. and you know his expertise with regard to the whole program right? and how, it's, how it can be handled. Mm -hmm. You know, they were done how, get it done, get it done, but you know, there's a point that you want just to go to to make sure that everybody's on the same page logistically with a set of drawings, and, and then you go to the next phase of uh, more detail, and then final detail. You don't do a 90 percent right up front which unfortunately happens mm -hmm. and that it's shame it's a shame that that happened but um, uh, luckily a good portion of those drawings still can be utilized all the details and everything else yeah. and that's that's valuable but mm -hmm. yeah they, it was they jumped so too far so we have on the 
so fire station uh, committee we're submitting site plan approval submission to planning board on January 15th and then they have a site plan approval planning board hearing on uh, February 19th do you want this did you get one of these no no, no, we no. Have to do, that. do you guys have a representative on the fire substation well, we can, uh, Gary 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 oh he's on that one yeah, Gary's on it Gary's yeah. on that um, he's on the senior so. yeah we're we're on budget right now so Dan is as well. <laughs> Both are, yeah. Paper walls, but right here. You know, oh, it's, <laughs> it's a plus, but if you would like to oh. take that, you can. I took too much of your time. I appreciate no. it. No, no, thank you. Good. Yeah, I was happy to have you. Man. And we'll, you know, oh, on the senior center side, I'll center. try to do my best to get for you stuff to you and okay. mention it to Phil. Try thank to you. make sure we get stuff to you guys. Great. So. Yeah, and Dave's usually, he's at most of our library. Yeah, Dave, 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 that's uh, all the Dave gives us more more. Both summary as well. I um, still haven't seen the drawings from that, but, um, but the yeah, updates but are there, still, so. Yeah. yeah. I've asked Allison for the exterior renderings. I know that there's been a uh, few comments made to us by the public about the, the the two buildings and how they they're not similar very much and you know they, they lack the identity of a town building because of the the differences between uh, them mm -hmm. I to the context yes yeah yeah and i think you were right to bring up the the part about the demolition of the of the senior center and how it's going to affect the uh, the two projects and access to that property where if they think they're going to be going through the Legion property again, as they <laughs> have in the past, I think that's you know not a good thing for them. Yeah, it's a red flag. Sure. It's yeah. a red flag yeah. that already just got thrown up in the air. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they've been very generous. We got them all settled over there. So I think uh, we all just we everybody just wants to work well together. You know. Yeah. But uh, I'm surprised that they wouldn't want. to well, there wasn't any more discussion on separating a demo out of the entire bid and you can get that separated and go. So that's pretty. We had, we had talked about that um, yeah. months ago, <laughs> saying, mm -hmm. you know, we, I think we had mentioned knock it down before before winter this winter and be done with that. We were not heating and cooling it, but we couldn't find space. But I mean, um, I don't see why it couldn't be broken out. Yeah, and, and I, th I think the only complication now is the fact that it's so far through the library grant process. Right. I don't know if that would be problematic well, to pull it out. Well, uh, and maybe how, not. I don't know. How, I mean, it's just, just don't pull it out of the, the, the whole thing, but pull it out as far as going out to bid. Why can't I, I'm you just do saying that I don't, separately? Yeah. That's I my don't, question. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, that's a specialized. Uh, contractor that does that. We, there's right. only three around. Yeah, no, that's a question yeah. I think you know from Mark Sullivan. The meeting at the house over there now. You could yeah. run over there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Run over the library. Hey, I'm, I'm here. Get out. Oh. I think David probably <laughs> just wants to run home and have yeah. supper tonight. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we have license license renewals issues. Quickly, well, we, we have the Park and Rec Commission here. Oh, he's here for Zaterka Park. Is it Turka Park? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm staying all night, so. Oh, you're staying all Go night? Ahead. Oh, okay. okay. Take Pixie. All right, let's do Park and Rec, because, Steve, that won't take very long. Come on. No, I think mine will be pretty simple. Okay. That I, um, <laughs> I am a junior <laughs> but commissioner. But thanks for staying. <laughs> junior, one of the most junior commissioner from Park and Rec, and I'm, I'm the messenger tonight. I, I am giving a little update, in which you, you all, have, all have knowledge of. We ran into problems during phase three at Satirka Park, um, and we concur, uh, you know, it, was, it was a result of the actions of uh, town officials from years ago. And we were surprised and, and made note, the stumps were detected and had to be cleaned up before we could proceed with the park. Um, this was tested for early on, but apparently not found in this particular section that they kind of stumbled into when they were digging. And, uh, we now need to use the remainder of the woodchuck fund money to pay incremental costs. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, therefore, we're coming to you. We're, uh, we'll be looking for the town for some assistance in the spring for paving at the Zaterka site. So we're going to need okay. some monies, and we, we had a breakdown 
David's been really good yeah, coming. So the, the balance remaining in the woodchuck fund after the, the first three change orders is fifteen thousand three seventy nine and twenty five cents. Uh, they're going to need that balance in order to handle change order number four, as well as an invoice from the Berkshire Design Group. Uh, there's some additional funding that will come from other sources to achieve that, but. Woodchuck Fund is here for that purpose. It's co-administered between the Park and Rec Commission and the Select Board. Uh, you've all taken your vote last week to uh, approve the 15,000 and change. So I think your request to the board is to support that approval. Can I ask um, Mr. Peters? Can you explain how the project management is working in the state? No. <laughs> um, let me state that I came on board when, um, just about at the time when they were uh, projecting how they were going to grade, and, and um, it was midstream, you know. Yeah. So I was a, a friend of that at that time, and um, all for it, and um, in charge of uh, um, recruiting and getting, getting people going and uh, raising money, fundraising, like I did with uh, friends. Parking rec. So I have the least amount of knowledge of it, you know, and I know where we stand. And um, I go over the change orders, and I was privy to that. Um, I'm happy with what's gone on and the way it looks, week to week. But that's not. I mean, so we have um, a master contracted to do the bulk of the work, right? Yes. So who's the point person with the master? I mean, the folks from master are they going to your chair? Are they do they come and meet with you periodically? I mean, how? No, I, I, um, Andy's um, basically the contact person in that, and it goes between your master and um, the company, the construction on Ber so, so Berkshire. Design. Berkshire. So, Park and Rec Commission own, has control of the project as we got further into the project. Uh, we had a series of uh, on-site meetings. I was able to help them out and provide guidance from time to time um, and uh, come up with a strategy for buttoning up the project this year. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the sins of the fathers are being visited upon the sons. Uh, we have a, a volunteer board managing a project uh, and with assistance from town staff. Because when this started out, there was a whole, I mean, it was David L. Bean and... Yep, who has since moved on. And, and, yeah. But I met him once. I had one meeting up there with uh, Berkshire and Greg and, and Andy, and that's all I've been really involved with, you know, at that phase of what we ran into and opened up, unearthed all the stumps. Yeah. And then we got those charges, so... I'll make a motion to approve this. I'm just worried about going forward, you know, the original scope of the project. We're going to plug this up now, but where's this project going from this point forward? Because we're going to end up being what fifty thousand over or something like that by the time we finish the paving. Thirty thousand, whatever. Um, I think you said as far as the project management, uh, talking to uh, the representative from Masta, they were very frustrated by the fact that that they couldn't get an answer on, on how to proceed for, for quite some time that kind of contributed to delays. Um, so that, that was one of their concerns as a contractor. I, I don't think there, it was clear who, who they were going to, to to say, make a decision what we have to do here. So yeah, I believe that's a situation of going into the asking of the park and rec and how we're going to handle it. And we weren't in the position to move on it, you know. And, right. and yeah, that would that would be Andy Klopacki. He's um, Andy, Andy probably feels like he doesn't have the authority he doesn't constitute a quorum, right? So he needs right. to wait until he can confer with you and Diane. Right, and we met right away as soon as they, we met right away and did everything we could do in our control. Right. You know? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think we've learned some lessons here. I mean, if you, you have the legal responsibility for the parks, uh, but we, we need some project management uh, uh, and a clear plan moving forward. And CPA is a certain, is a, knows that you're probably going to come back to them in the fall to spring, sorry, to ask for additional funding for whatever we can do to 
finish the project up next summer. Second motion. Okay. If it wasn't already it was yeah. it wasn't seconded. So okay. any further discussion? And is there any other work besides the paving as far as the fields and that kind of thing goes? Seating and seating all that? and that, that yeah. yeah. Um other grading or that's all taken care of at this point. That grading's pretty close, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've done out they've got uh the handrails and guardrails and this and that going in. Um it's uh visually appeasing right now. From where it was. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Aye. 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 All right. Stay tuned for another update. See? Yeah. Bye, Mr. Thank Higgins. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, license renewals. Are you stamping? Am I stamping? Mm. All the licenses? Oh, yeah. I'll stamp them. There's like 160 of them. So I'll stamp. <laughs> Perfect. So licenses were all due on November 30th. The list you have in front of you um, is complete for everybody who has submitted minus one thing, which will be added on the 12th. Um, I do have 18 outstanding right now who have not turned in the paperwork or communicated with me about why they haven't. Um, but other than that, the list is full, complete, everybody's in good standing with the town, and their paperwork is complete. I would ask that you make Whole Foods and the tap room contingent upon them passing their inspection from the building inspector. He's not been able to coordinate with them to get over there to do the inspections. Um, I'll make a motion to approve with any outstanding inspections being we're confident there won't be a problem with either yeah. one of those. They've been all, yeah. they've always been pretty good, but mm -hmm. it's just time. How about the quarters? Quarters is paid in full, everything is complete, and they've passed all their the inspection. inspections passed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are at the end. Mm -hmm. Legion, Young Men's Club, they're all? Yeah, they're all done. Uh, the only two that have not been done is the Whole Foods and Tapper. Certainly everybody has their, their homework to do on uh, some a little bit longer than others. Mm -hmm. uh, we're confident that, that everybody will do what they need to do. Uh, certainly with the uh, Legion, we do have issues over there and um, Mike is talking to them, trying to come up with another time frame mm -hmm. on when they're going to complete the work that they need to do. It is what it is. Um, yeah, men's it, club as well. Right? Yeah, they're they're actually in better shape. Um, mm -hmm. The problem with the young men's club is is code issue with fire uh, and the state. The state's requiring something that we generally have never requested in the past, and that's sprinklers outside under mm -hmm. the pavilion for the um, uh, uh, at the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. That's something we're we're in discussions with. The, don't know why that would be a requirement when it's an open platform that if anything did happen people people have a, don't have just one access to go through they just run. <laughs> so you know those, those it's an open place. Yeah, but the the state is stating that anytime you have cooking facilities See, you have have why I say a thirty five thousand dollar cancel system pride. and we're saying well, do we really need that for, for a temporary type of use? Mm -hmm. So, um, I just want to make sure we're holding everybody to the same standard. There's yes. no differential treatment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There isn't. Okay. And certainly with the Legion, we, we, we're putting them on a time. Okay. Time Motion standard. to approve subject to preliminary inspections. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Is that a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think they're, we're going to have another round of uh, licenses for next, mm -hmm. next week. Uh, but if any licenses come in after, or do not come in after July, January 1st, we're asking for a $25 late fee. Yeah. Do we want that higher? Yeah. I was going to say. I mean, whatever you Call it a slot fee. <laughs> <laughs> so on, uh, this will be my third round mm -hmm. of licenses. 
and every year there's perpetual offenders mm -hmm. who tell me that it's a tough time of year and, and I feel like this is one of the situations you just said we're treating everybody the same. Yeah. The letter says November 30th. Mm -hmm. There's some people like that their mail got returned to me and they changed their address, which they should have told me that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also I, know that they have it every year. Right. And so it's usually I, important to their business to have it. And I feel like that the town, we want our businesses to succeed, of course. but we also have a responsibility to the taxpayers to make sure that the businesses are paying mm -hmm. for the services that they use in the town. And also, this is just good business practice. You know this bill's coming, you pay your bill. So what's the cost for a yearly on-premise alcohol, alcohol license? Uh, just, uh, just uh, $3,500. 3500 So what, can we give it a $100 late fee? I mean, I, I don't think that's unreasonable as far as uh, it, it, can't meet the, or, or, or do, or do 20, 20, $25 really a month. Yeah, 25 I'm a sorry. month. How many people on average are late? Um, I'll have every, yeah, I'll have everybody, almost everybody, yeah. cleaned up on December 12th, which is how it tends to happen. That second meeting in December, I'll start putting a lot of legwork to get everybody in. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be at least five businesses that you will see in January. The problem is you're sure. spending your time. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. This chasing and them. Chasing them. Mm -hmm. and, and this is, uh, for lack of a better term, that loss of revenue for right. town hall. I think anybody after two. December and they go into January should have a $100. Yeah. I just want to clear that all yeah. of our liquor licenses, mm -hmm. that's not us, that's the ABCC. They're paid. And there's not a liquor license outstanding. Okay. They are paid. Mm -hmm. We're talking automatic amusement, uh, skating rinks. Um, How much is it? A hundred dollar per device. Okay. Common VIX, a hundred dollars. Skating rinks, I oh, okay. think, are two fifty. Um, right. These are smaller ones. Our alcohol are all paid. The common, the automatic amusements are actually a very high ticket when you add in the fact there's twelve of them in a place. That's where that sort of becomes real substantial amounts of money. Mm -hmm. So automatic amusements, that's like, like arcades, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. arcade games. Any type of game. Yeah. Here's, we're still doing a late fee, though, right? Yeah, that's what I'm about. Mm -hmm. I'm all for $100. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think motion. I can make a motion that we increase the late fee to $100 beyond, beyond January 1st. Yeah. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And you'll let them know, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. So Maybe that would be effective. Yeah. So for next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. What? I'm sorry, no? Effective this year? I was thinking that we would not become effective until December of 2019. I don't feel like because there was not notice given, yeah. I don't feel like that would be a fair thing to do to anybody. It's December 5th. But up there, the bill already Six. went out, right? But yeah, I, so I already have my letter. The letter already states that, you know, if you have not paid, if you have great. anything in arrears for the yeah. town, that we won't issue your license. Like, there's a, right. as right. much as I would like for everybody to, yeah. to pay a fee, um, I don't think it's could, right. could we send a letter on you said there's 18 that are still outstanding I could do that I could send a letter saying you know, at their meeting on December 5th the select board voted to assess a fee for all late payments yeah. um, as we have not received your fee you will be assessed this payment as of January 1st if we do not have your um, we will do that to them sure okay, okay. paperwork's not in good order yeah. Yeah. is that Sounds okay good. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, absolutely yeah. perfect okay water abatement 36 Jamur Road thank you Tim. thank you both yeah. You can stay though if you want. I am staying. <laughs> I'm just I'm just moving off camera because I can't now. Okay. Water abatement for Chimera Road. The water meter has been off. Um, they got charged for sixteen dollars and ninety five cents. So and this is from the the collector's office. It yeah. is. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Super. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Just a reminder that we have a vote coming up on December 18th. Yeah. Hopkins Academy. Do you have Twelve anything? to yep. eight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were done. There's sample ballots available online on the front of the web page. Perfect. I just didn't know if there was anything in David's town administrator report that we didn't cover. Covered a lot of stuff. I don't know. Covered a lot of stuff. There are some updates, so let me go through them very briefly. 
Um, the uh, the new thing is the FEMA flood insurance maps. Uh, they're FEMA is in charge of a uh, upgrade of all the maps, showing 100-year, 500-year flood plains in cities and towns along the Connecticut River watershed. In excess of 80 municipalities are are involved. Last time we had our flood insurance maps uh, done for us it was back in the 1970s, 1980s, and they were using 20-foot contours. It's been improved uh, mapping technology. They're using two-foot contours now. There's been a lot of development in the last, call it, 40 years. Uh, and they, they're using height, different hydrological mo modeling programs. So we had a chance to look at the, and when I say we, it was the town uh, um, building inspector, two members of the planning board, the fire chief and me went to the, uh, the engineers that are working for FEMA. We took a look at the, uh, the proposed new maps, and there's a lot more floodplain in Hadley than currently. And this affects people's ability to get flood insurance and uh, the process. So, Is it crystal ball? There's going to be more or less? Probably more at this so point. Okay. It's more expensive to flood insurance by house. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we certainly want to do the right thing. We have people are living at risk in a floodplain. We want to make sure that they that they're properly insured. We certainly don't want to overshoot and have people insured for floods who've never seen a flood, even in the 1936s no, uh, and 1930s. There's no grandfathering either, right? I no, mean, if you're in an existing location that suddenly goes into the floodplain, I'm yeah. assuming your carrier would then require you to get the flood insurance, or is uh, it only at the point of sale? I don't know. That's a good question. I think it's at the point of sale because the, usually the mortgage companies require the certificate from FEMA saying right. yes or no. So point of sale, or if you're doing a second mortgage or a reverse yeah, mortgage, or, 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 you know, or any kind of major renovation to your to your house, people are going to be affected. About four or five years' time, we're going to be asked to adopt these new uh, flood insurance maps at a town meeting, and there may be zoning changes that go along with that. So, important that we engage with FEMA now because there will be a window that closes that we're, we're, we're able to give them feedback on as to the accuracy of the maps. We provided a lot of commentary that asking them to check the elevations of, uh, of certain high grounds because we thought that that was some of the flooding that they showed was uh, excessive. Uh, we also gave them updates in terms of the work that we've been doing on the Connecticut River levee, so the freeboard analysis, the slope stability analysis, and the other work that we've done there. So I've asked that the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission take this project on as a re regional project, very much in the same way as the commission is guiding us through stormwater as a regional compliance effort. Uh, the I hope that um, the discovery meetings that I went to, there were a lot of people who were not there that should have been there. Now maybe there were at subsequent meetings that I was not able to attend, but I think getting this information out to the towns is important. I also think that given the five-year time period in this, that we should uh, uh, make sure that there's somebody who's keeping the ten uh, paying attention to compliance requirements over a five-year period, and boards come, boards go, leadership changes, you know, five years is a long time. Route 9 widening project, it looks like they're going to be going out to bid in September 2021, so that's a year's delay in that project. Um, the Moody Bridge Road flat grant update, uh, we replaced the culvert uh, on the westerly side of uh, Moody Bridge Road in the project area. I think it was just yesterday that Billy brought me out to the other culverts to the east there and pointed out that they're beginning to collapse. Um, so we have temporarily uh, closed Moody Bridge Road. Uh, and we're working with our engineers and the Conservation Commission to come up with some sort of plan. We might be uh, using Chapter 90 money in order to take care of those culverts there. Does that affect access to the Sylvia County? 
It does not. We've That's closed true. the road after that. Nobody's landlocked there. Okay. Uh, you can only access it from Bay Road, though, to yeah. get there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Might be an issue in the spring with farming, but I think it'll be okay for the rest of the year. Yeah. We talked about the senior center and the library, Zaturka Park, <laughs> septic truck. Uh, we've received bids for Hockenham Cemetery marker restoration as well as the cemetery marker assessment for the other four cemeteries. That's been, uh, those bids have been forwarded to the Cemetery Commission and they'll make a recommendation to you in January. Adult use marijuana, the planning board is working on them. The Board of Health has completed their uh, health regulations and they adopted them on November 27th. Uh, we had a training, Jennifer, you may want to talk a little bit about this, the website project that you've been working on. You had a training scheduled for November 15th. There was foul weather that night, so I think you've rescheduled that training. Um, we had the schedule. We had the scheduled training during the day, and then we did have to cancel that night for the storm. I have not chosen another date yet for the boards and committees to come in the evening. Um, December's. I feel like it's sort of a hard time to try to get people to show up. So um, I'm going to send out an email asking for the first of the year. Um, they all have the ability to go ahead and, and watch some webinars at their own convenience and have the ability, they all have their logins, they can already sign in. So um, that's where we are on that. I just, I think the ability to get people to come in in the next few days is limited. We're still on track for early January launch at the new site? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> people are working on it. Yeah. I'm getting emails, people are asking questions, so I'm feeling really good about it. But um, we'll say early mid-January. And we got a Sorry. Uh, we got a safety grant from uh, uh, Maya. It just came in a few minutes hours ago. Fifty five hundred dollars for uh, trench uh, safety equipment for DPW. Is that it? That's it. Okay. And you did have town elections on December eighteenth again. We remind people, please get out and vote. Nice turnout at the November. Um, I just have a few announcements. Does anybody else have announcements for this evening? No? Um, I have some uh, passings of our local residents. Uh, Helen O'Brien, Dennis Meehan, who was active with the library, Leonard Gnotic, uh, long time Hadley uh, person, uh, Larry Bereska, uh, brother of Kenny and uh, Ronnie, and uh, Bruno Schmigelski, who uh, did not live here but did graduate from Hopkins, and um, many people in town uh, he was still very friendly with. So, our condolences from the select board to all of these families on your loved ones passing. A little bit more upbeat note, I believe the fire department, fire department is having a stuff the truck event mm -hmm. and that is being held on December 16th. 16th, thank you. 16th. Sunday. Sunday. Sunday the 16th. I think it's okay. 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. So bring your toys. All right, we have an executive session this evening. Uh, you want me to read it? Please. Oh, I make a motion that we go into executive session for the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21A2, to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel. And we're going to be talking with the town administrator this evening, if the chair so declares. I so declare that it would be detrimental to... Oh, good. I know. you got to give me that to you. <laughs> Right. Put that in my mm -hmm. thing. Uh, detrimental to the public. public. Okay. 
could affect the, the town's bargaining position to have the discussion so about <laughs> Roll call vote. Bill? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Stanley? Yes. And uh, Trungle? Yes. Good night. Good night, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>